what's up everybody? Look there's Eric! What's that coming over the stack of boxes? Is it a monster? <laughs> yes! Um, so, welcome to the stream everybody. Uh, this week it's me and, well, a couple of products, but also Eric! I'm not sure Hello everybody! Was, when was your last stream? Well, not last week because Michiel had the no, same that, joke. that was me and Michiel indeed. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Eric's here, and today we're going to be talking about these two products. So you can also see them behind me here, of course. Yeah. So uh, these are uh, the <coughs> Vigor GK71 Sonic Blue, or Blue Switches, and the GM uh, Clutch GM51 Lightweight Wireless. So you probably wonder why I'm here, because I don't know shit about these products. Can I say shit? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, um, it's a family show, Eric. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, because I'm here to control that uh, Peter's time, that he's not talking three hours about these kind of keyboards and how clicky they are and all the, you know, the, the small talk. That's why we did not invite Michiel today. And uh, I've placed Eric uh, at a safe distance, so I'm pretty sure that these products will survive this stream. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. we will see. Yeah. Uh, I still need to fix some things. Uh, you go ahead, Peter. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I, uh, <coughs> I I've got a, I've got all the buttons here, so uh, that's all right. Anyway, um, yeah. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, let us know if you have any questions while we go into these uh, products. Uh, before we start, though, uh, there is a giveaway. There you go. Uh, it's a Steam wallet codes, and. Uh, the, this stream, depending on which platform you're you're looking, uh, you're watching, but uh, it is tagged as playing The Last of Us Part One. We are going to play it later on this stream, so uh, that's not a lie, right? Um, don't worry. Uh, and I've actually got a pretty pretty damn good build. Uh, if you've watched the last live stream, you know what it's based on. Uh, but yeah, that build is going to form the basis of the rig that we're going to play The Last of Us Part One on later on this live stream. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's get cracking here. Um, so we've got some products. Uh, so first I want to start by taking a closer look at the keyboard. So uh, it's the GK71 Sonic Blue Switches. Uh, it's called Blue Switches because you might be familiar with a, another GK71 Sonic that we have. Uh, but that has red switches. Uh, the red switches are linear. This one is uh, blue or clicky, so which mean th means there's a tactile and audible click uh, in the switch when you um, yeah when you when you actuate it when you press it in. So at the at the back of the box everything is uh, nicely detailed on the detailed cam. So you can see this all, all the data about the switch and stuff. Uh, the rest is pretty pretty much the same as the other GK71. So it has the the really nice uh, volume uh, knob, uh, the buttons there. Uh, the clear caps, so the uh, RGB is quite, uh, you know, bright and vibrant. Uh, there's a wrist rest, uh, memory foam wrist rest included. Uh, and of course there's full software support as well for everything. And here's all the specs and stuff you need to know if, if you want to make sure it's for your system. But uh, to be fair, it will probably work on most systems. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's if you want to make sure you, you have the red or the blue one, uh, it's uh, on the front of the box, but also on the side there, uh, so the, the red one will say Sonic Red, uh, and it will not say Clicky, obviously. Um, so, let's see if I can do a little bit of a, an unboxing for you. I'm gonna move the camera just slightly. I hope the camera will not stop working while I do this. Cool, yes, it survives. It better not. No, 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 but sometimes, you know, the, <coughs> the connector uh, will, will not like me. I think we fixed that. Moving. Oh, okay, cool. That's nice. So when you open it up, you can see also there. Oh, here you go. Yeah, with the light there. So it's it's subtle, but it's there. Uh, MSI Sonic Blue, clicky. And we take that out. And then it's uh, there. Of course, is uh, the keyboard, the main thing. You take out these protective foam pads uh, and this part as well. And then here's the keyboard, um, still in a, a protective plastic. Uh, we need this, otherwise, you know, it can uh, it can get dirty or um, I don't know, damage, I guess. So it protects the keyboard. So there it is. Um, and like I said, it looks very very similar to uh, the other GK71 that we featured. Uh, well, when was it? Maybe about a year ago or something that the, the first one was launched. Uh, but it's a pretty damn <coughs> nice keyboard. Um, not the biggest, as in, you know, the frame around it is, is not that huge, uh, but it's a full-size keyboard, as you can see, with numpad and everything. 
Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go into the features a little bit more once we get rid of the box. But I also want to show you what else is in the box. Of course, there is the, you know, the, the booklets, the European Union regulatory stuff. Hey, you have to have it, unfortunately. Um, there is a keycap puller included. Uh, see if I can wrestle that out of the box. This is something I can play with, right? Sorry? I can play with that, not? The keycap puller. Mm -hmm. Pull some... Uh... I don't know. You, you can, but not from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but here you go. I mean, it's a, it's a basic <coughs> wire puller, so that's really easy. Just, you know, put it over the keycap that you want to remove. Jatelin is asking, are they hot swappable? Uh, the switches, no. But the keycaps themselves, quite easily. Uh, yes, and it's pretty much, well, there's a, it's an MX uh, stem. Hot means you, you need to see. plug it in. Yeah, I, th I know. I, I know. Oh, okay. You mean the cable? No. Because I don't, I don't, it depends. So uh, the cable is fixed. Uh, you can't, uh, it's not a detachable cable. It is fixed in place. You cannot pull it out. Um, <clears throat> the switches themselves also, they are fixed. So uh, you cannot, it's not like you can swap out or switch the switches. Uh, not in this model, no. So you have, that's why you, you buy the, the keyboard with certain switches and uh, I'm <coughs> advising you to take a good look at which one you're buying because you won't be able to um, switch them out later on. Uh, Question on TikTok, when are the new gaming headsets coming out? I think we're new not supposed headsets. to talk about that. New gaming headsets? Yeah. Hmm. Soon. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know that some have been announced uh, during CES, for example, and uh, you know it takes a while, but uh, they're coming. And once they, they do come out, we will, of course, cover them uh, in this live stream. Uh, here's the memory foam uh, wrist rest, uh, also with the, the subtle MSI logo there. Uh, basically just a little bit more shiny, but it's nice and, and you know, cushy uh, with a anti-slip base. Now you might be wondering uh, why is the, the X shape at the bottom here? That's because it matches or basically it links up with the rest of the keyboard. So when you put it there, there you go, it forms like a, an X and that's a cable uh, management space. So basically if you want to run your headset cable, for example, from your keyboard or from uh, your monitor uh, from the top you can choose it from you know choose to let it run from either side and it can run underneath both the uh, the keyboard itself and the wrist rest and you know when you see the x that it's the bottom of the keyboard sorry when you see the x you also know it's the bottom of the keyboard yes eric that's especially for you that's yeah. the wrong side yeah <laughs> you're having it upside down <laughs> indeed <laughs> indeed um but yeah i wanted to show that to you of course <coughs> Now I'm going to just quickly get rid of the box so we can get to the keyboard itself, which is, of course, what we're here to see. Here we go. Uh, all right. So the keyboard. Um, so as you can see, and as I was saying, it's a full size keyboard, meaning uh, it has a numpad as well. Otherwise, it would be a TKL or a even smaller size. Yeah. Um, it has some specific buttons, as I mentioned here. So these are the, the dedicated media controls with uh, previous track, play, pause, uh, next track, and a mute. This is a button if you press it, so you can mute instantly, or if you turn it, and you can do that from the top, like so, but also from the side. I'm not sure if you can see this. It's a little bit of a textured uh, side here as well. So you can also, uh, yeah, operate the volume this way, uh, turning the volume up or down. And you can you can also rebind this if you want to do other stuff. Like if do you, you need if you uh, prefer if you prefer you know going down up and down <coughs> websites uh, with this instead of your mouse wheel, you can do that. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but hey, you can. Is it does it need extra software, Peter? Uh, MSI Sender to okay. do that, of yeah. course. Yes. Yeah. 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 All the customization pretty much you can do in the MSI Center, but there's a lot of things you can also do on the keyboard itself without having to install any software. And for that, I, you know, a couple of examples I can uh, show you here, because uh, there's a lot of icons, for example, on the arrow keys here. So this is, uh, you know, turning the lights, uh, the, the backlighting uh, brighter or dimming it, changing the color. Um, and there's some other things here. This is like, uh, you know, pressing, you have to press the this function key, the dragon key, and then some of the other keys like this one that will cycle you through the uh, predefined effects that, that are on the keyboard. That answers the question of Indiana uh, Roy. Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and so there's also a lot of, you, you, this is like uh, speeding up the effect that you ha currently have on there, if it's like a rainbow effect or something like that. This is slowing the effect down. Uh, this is, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is uh, determining the direction, like if you have a rainbow move or a wave moving across it, you can have it going across this, uh, this side, or if you press uh, the other button, it will go to the other side. Um, and this uh, also, I think, is for uh, switching sides. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, hotkeys on there. So you basically, you can do a lot of stuff, customization on this keyboard already. Uh, to do with uh, that was specifically to do with RGB um, on the keyboard without having to install any software. Uh, a couple of other things that you can do as well, of course, is uh, there's a dedicated uh, launching. Uh, trying to get it sharp. Yeah. Uh, launching afterburner, basically. So also push the uh, dragon key and this one, uh, F1, and then. Uh, if you have Afterburner installed, it will launch automatically, uh, and other stuff. I mean, you can, if you're a bit handy, you can um, make macros and, and you know, uh, make hotkeys yourself. Few people uh, have this keyboard, either the red switches or the blue switches. Not sure if the Probably blue switches the, are well, available. I mean, the blue switches have been out for, I think, now a one, couple, uh, of, couple of weeks, but yeah, not indeed. that long, but yeah. yes. And they love it. Uh, which one, the red or...? Well. Uh, uh, Scaldian is saying, I have the red switch, GK71, yep. very yep. good keyboard. Uh, Real Satemp keyboard is saying, week. just got yep. the, that keyboard in last week, love it. Nice, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is also about the switches. Where's it's my sample, really, Peter? It's a, it's, a really, um, it's, a, it's a really personal choice, in my opinion. This is uh, what I've heard also. I mean, objectively, you can say something is better than, you know, like one type of switch is better than the other. But it's it really is a personal thing. Some people like really light switches, like you know, that are very easy to press uh, and and short travel times. And other people like the longer switches, which you know require a bit more force and and uh, the heavier switches. It's really and also, I mean, Eric was a, a non-believer when it comes to um, True. low low profile switches. Yeah. But ever since he uh, stole my sample <laughs> of the GK50 uh, low profile, he refuses to give it back now. Yeah. So he's. Fully converted. He won't, he won't use another keyboard now. So, you know, the thing is, once you try it, that's when you really find out, all right, so this is what I think about it. So it's really a personal thing. And that's also why um, I remember when I first bought my first uh, uh, mechanical keyboard, it was a really expensive one. I, I, I opted for one with, you know, extra keys at the sides as well because it looked really nice. And I thought, I'm going to totally use that. <laughs> I didn't, of course. Uh, but I ended up regretting it because also I, I took normal, I think it was red switches or something and in the end i found out by after when i started working here as well and i got all these other keyboards that I try out and stuff i found out that i'm actually more of a clicky key guy myself but i never knew a because i just person. bought the keyboard thinking well this is going to be the best one right it has to be because it's expensive no uh, it's really something that you have to try and then find out and especially because they're not that cheap i mean they're not overly expensive not like graphics card level expensive but still it's best for something like this you go to the store where they have them yep. and you try different yep. key uh, keys out that yep. you know a bit what you like and yeah, what you don't like yeah but even in the store it's difficult i have to I say know. because you're not going to spend like I don't know, an hour or something in the store you know you really only find out in your own home situation when you're yeah. you know, uh, comfortable, when you're playing your game or something, and then think, all right, OK, well, yeah, maybe I'll try something else. That's difficult. I mean, you cannot uh, like borrow them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, this one has the blue Yeah, switches. switch touch tester, that's correct. But uh, you know, most times they only have one key of each switch. Yeah. So it's difficult to, uh, you get to an idea really feel the, the type, switch get the typing the, feeling. Yeah, you get an idea of the switch and the differences of the switches and the, um, you know, the different qualities of the switches, basically. But it's still, for a lot of people, I think it's, it's going to be diff different when they actually type on a full keyboard and, yeah. and you know, do some, either some work or some Abuse gaming on it. it. Because that gives you a really total, uh, totally different experience. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, it's so the the caps. Actually, I'm gonna pull one off again. Uh, can we go to the details here? No. Uh, this is what we call clear caps, and as you can see, basically it consists out of two uh, main areas. Uh, let's say so. There is the the bottom side, which is semi-transparent, as you can see. It's a little bit darkened, but not much. And then the top end is opaque, meaning you can't look through it. It's completely like normal plastic, let's say. Um, which means that the light doesn't really shine straight into your face, because then you know, if this was uh, trans translucent, this would really be too bright in, right into your face. So this really means that the light comes out through the sides more. 
Um, so that's the clear caps. Uh, let me see, put it back on there. Uh, other than that, yeah, you have a stand, uh, which basically, I mean, there's there's like flat and there is, uh, I think it's one, yeah, there's one, basically one uh, level. So you can put it up a little bit if you if you prefer that. Uh, oh, yeah, you can't see it, but there we go. So either that or like that. Uh, as I mentioned, there's the cable routing, of course, um, like that and like that for your, let's say, headphone cables or mouse cables, whatever you want to do. So Peter, uh, two questions related to wireless. Uh, yeah. Somebody asked, does this have Bluetooth? And not a uh, question, uh, well, it's is not a question, a like a remark, this is one is wired. Is that about the keyboard? Yeah, we're talking no, about the keyboard. keyboard is not wireless. Yeah, and does not have Bluetooth? Uh, no, it, if it's not wireless, no. It does yeah. also and the, the cable is not detachable? No, no, indeed. Yeah, it does have not, a nice not for this cable, one, right? cable management tool, though, which is uh, attached to the cable. So any part of the cable you're not using, you can just, you know, neatly bunch together and then tie off so that it yeah. doesn't clutter your desk. That's always a nice thing to have. Uh, also, it's more like a floating key design, as you can see. So there's a little bit of room between the switches and the keycaps. Oh, sorry, the uh, the base of the uh, uh, keyboard and the keycaps. Uh, also makes it a little bit easier for cleaning, which actually we did uh, with another sample I'm going to show you in a minute, um, because it was being used for quite a while. Uh, we found one sandwich between the keys. Yeah, yeah, like a couple of meals indeed, I think, <laughs> and, and like uh, half a person worth of skin. Uh, anyway, um, and there is the uh, aluminum, I want to say brushed, but it's not really, it's more like, a, I don't know, sandblasted, you know, it's like a matte finish uh, aluminum uh, base. Uh, aircraft grade aluminum, as it's called. And the rest, I think, <laughs> is better shown um, yeah, when I plug it in. But also, we can maybe go to the uh, PPT so I can show a little bit in the background. Uh, uh, Peter, talking yes. about the keys, uh, do they have a click bar or um, a click jacket? Uh -huh. <laughs> good, good question. Yeah. Uh, actually, I want to get into that in a minute, so I'm actually not going to tell that yet. Okay, okay. Because I want to, I want to go into that with a couple of examples of other uh, products as well. Aha, Eric, you have to do the PPT part because uh, something changed. No, no, no. Oh, okay. It's this one. Yeah. Um, indeed. So let me just quickly go through the slides as well to show you the main uh, features. So this is the the keyboard. Uh, the uh, the slogan, of course, is light touch, instant kill. Really meaning that with the GK71 Sonic series, whether it be the red or the blue switches you get, it's also, it's, it's more aimed at responsiveness, low travel time. So the, the goal there is really that it's, uh, you know, you, you get the fa fast action and fast, um, how is it called? Yeah, the, the, the actions per minute or whatever you, you want to call it, right? You, the responsiveness of your keyboard. So you can really press keys uh, really fast if you have to. Uh, they reset fast and they don't take long uh, and much force to press in. Uh, from the start. Uh, here's a bit of an overview. So um, yeah, the MSRP also, it's, it really depends per country. And normally I, I don't really include it. I wanted to include it now to give at least some idea. Uh, also because from most of the reviews I've read, uh, everybody's quite positive about the price. It's, it's on the lower end of uh, you know, the really high end mechanical keyboards. Uh, so it's yeah, about 110. This is in US dollars, by the way. Uh, but I think it, it translates into different countries, different currencies a little bit differently. Uh, if you want to know the real price, as always, just look it up in your own country. That will give you the best, uh, the best idea. Uh, Peter, the, the keycaps, uh, are yep. they ABS, PBT or rubber? They are uh, ABS, if I'm not mistaken, indeed. Um, A question from Nortil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are ABS, uh, indeed. And uh, this was uh, also chosen, I, I believe, because of the um, uh, because of the the nature of the clear caps, meaning you know the dual finish. Uh, then it was apparently easier uh, to do that with, uh, or not easier, but you know the it was uh, let's say the the production uh, quality would be higher if you used uh, PBT. Oh, sorry, if you used ABS. Um, but we are definitely looking for future keyboards. We are definitely also looking into uh, using PBT. Because we are aware that a lot of people are, um, you know, asking for that. And, and, and uh, there, is a bit, there is definitely a, a quality, 
uh, you know, a quality difference. So we are aware of that and we're looking into it as well. I have some good uh, question on tip TikTok. Uh, yeah. How can we uh, win a keyboard? Are we giving away a keyboard? Uh, nope. Somebody wants to win a free PC. That's, those are not cool. Those, those are not good questions, Eric. Oh, there are good questions. Mm. Not the, really. The answer is no. Yeah. Um, yeah, somebody is saying, uh, although the price of GK71 is not that low, uh, but user experience and quality are very good. Yeah. No, it's not low in and of itself. That's why I also mentioned at the beginning, like, if you're going to buy a mechanical keyboard, that's, you know, it's going to be, I don't know, starting from like 60, 60 ish dollars or something, um, and all the way upwards to a couple of hundreds if you really go look on the high end uh, of uh, mechanical keyboards. And then you have features like, you know, switchable switches and stuff like that, or hot swap switches. Uh, so it's really, it really depends on how much you want to spend on it. Uh, but again, you know, the switches are quite defining for your experience as well. So make sure you, you take the time and know what you want. Uh, but yeah, 110. If you compare it to most of the, uh, you know, the higher end uh, mechanical keyboards, it's definitely not on the higher, higher end of the scale. Uh, but I know it's it's still not, uh, <laughs> it's still not cheap. No, definitely. Um, yeah, it's also got uh, three memory uh, profiles on board, meaning you can, uh, yeah, you can predefine three profiles uh, for, you know, for example, different hotkeys or RGB settings. Um, and it's also got a hybrid N plus six key rollover, meaning pretty much you, you, yeah, you shouldn't ever, unless you're really hammering your forehead and every other, you know, thing you have on your body uh, onto the keys uh, at the same time, which shouldn't be helpful while gaming. Uh, but you shouldn't really run into any issues, um, you Peter? know, with the uh, maximum number of keys being pressed at the same time. Yeah, some interesting questions, and I don't know how to answer. Will MSI ever consider making a 50, 65 or 75 percent keyboard like some other brands start to do? And here yeah. also, we, oh, 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 let me let me answer that question. I first. would also uh, like no numpad, aka yeah. 75. Is the same like TKL? No, yeah, well, no numpad indeed. And actually, uh, I have an example here because we we have. Uh, a keyboard uh, which is a GK50 low profile, and this is the TKL version. And so this yeah. is like 70, 65 or 75. I don't know if I do believe it's something like 75, but once you go into the percentages, usually that means it's even more compact. So all the keys are even more uh, closely. So uh, probably you also together. lose the function keys on the right and the cursor keys. Mm, yes, That's but also basically 65. means that some of the keys are smaller and basically, you know, you're trying to eliminate as much space like this space as well. So everything is a bit more, you know, bunched up uh, indeed. So it, it yeah. becomes even smaller and more compact. Uh, I do believe in the TKL is is uh, considered 80%. So again, I'm not I'm not 100% sure on the percentages, but I know that once you get into the percentages, uh, like you know, 65 is is a is a is a common one. Uh, but that one is quite small indeed. And no, we don't have those uh, those kinds of keyboards at the moment. Um, and uh, to be fair, I, well, we, we may be looking into them again. Like TKL, we're looking into for more keyboards as well. But yeah. It's still relatively niche, I have to tell you, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. that, that's just the, what we're seeing in the market right now. So uh, it might be interesting, but of course, you know, we also need to make sure that we can sell a certain amount of them, especially keyboards can be a nightmare because, I mean, in a market like the USA, no problem, right? You can get like a very high order quantity because it's all one layout, but in Europe, you have uh, multiple layouts like, you know, Nordics has a different layout, Germany, uh, uh, the, the Netherlands uses US International, so it's quite easy. UK has a different layout, again, uh, Italy has a different layout, France, so there is, you know. Luxembourg has a combination yeah, between so it's, France, and there's Germany. Still, there's still indeed, uh, uh, Fadi Diab is also saying ISO versus uh, ANSI or ANSI, ANSI. Indeed, so that's also a difference, and that's usually also decided per uh, country. You know, one use, and that's like physical key difference size, right? Because that means like the enter key, for example, is a completely different size and shape. Um, so that also means that your your keys aren't just it's not you're not producing the same uh, shape of keys and and just changing the markings on them. No, you have to you know completely create a new uh, set of keys for that. 
Um, so yeah, it's it, from a production standpoint as well. It's it's uh, there are certain challenges and limits that we have to keep in mind there. Yeah. Uh, which is again, and that's different, for example, when it comes to a mouse, because a mouse is universal; it doesn't change, per, you know, in layout per country. Uh, so that's that's one of the things that you you tend to see with keyboards is that it's yeah, that's sometimes what's uh, what's a limiting factor. <laughs> Marcus is saying, but localized layouts are used by boomers and office clerks. Well, <laughs> gamers should go to the English only. But what is English, right? UK or? Uh, yeah, I mean, US International, uh, there's like, there's multiple English layouts even. So I uh, think people from Britain go. would miss the pound key. Yeah, exactly. I think there's US even a European layout right with a yeah. euro sign, which is not a US uh, international layout. Ah, we should just give it to them. <laughs> I'm also using U.S. International. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same, but that's the thing. That's that's just what is common. What's always been used from the beginning in uh, in the Netherlands. So that's what we're used to. But yeah. I can imagine that if you're used to, you know, uh, Azurti, which is the French layout, or uh, Quartz, which is the German layout, then you know, using a layout from a different country will totally mess you up. Even if I, you you can of course change the layout in Windows, so it acts. Yeah, it's but it's it's something. It still messes you up, right? When That's I was young, uh, I had you have like a typing course to learn to type yeah. blind on the yeah. keyboard, yeah. and I first yeah. had it in. Uh, I think first I had it in Holland on a US international layout, and then I moved uh, to Belgium just across the border, and I had it again on a uh, Belgium layout. Yeah. That was a nightmare yeah. because, like what Peter says, it you know. Well, the whole. You, I mean, this is totally screwy on multiple levels for you as well, because yeah. the whole thing about blind typing is that you don't have to look at your keyboard, so, which means yeah. you you memorize by muscle memory yeah. which key is what. Yeah. So if suddenly and the layout changes, like you know, try to unlearn muscle memory. That's yeah. What the hell? No. And it's it's, it's for example in Belgium, it's not only that the layout changes, uh, yeah. like a uh, few keys are switched, but also. Uh, the alt key uh, with certain uh, symbols on top of them yep, uh, yep. is different. So uh, actually in Belgium they have the numbers on top and uh, I think I think it's like that. I'm not, not, oh, you have a Belgium layout there, Peter, or not? No, 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 no. Uh, we had one here. Oh, okay, but, okay I mean, never mind. Yeah. I'm not going to say because I'm yeah, not 100% yeah. sure, but, but I believe lot they switched uh, a lot of things around. Yes. Right, so uh, some differences I want to point out as well, because again we were talking about we have two different GK71s. We have the Sonic Red, which is on the top, which is linear, and then we have the Sonic Blue, which is clicky which is at the bottom uh, and a couple of things I want to point out one the operation force meaning or operating force uh, meaning how much strength is required or weight is required to uh, get an actuation to, to get the you know a key to register let's say uh, the, the sonic red is still lighter by quite a bit so it's 10 grams or, or, or uh, what is it uh, there was also like n not Newton meter but like uh, yeah anyway th there's another measurement for that um, Still, so the, the Sonic Blue is requires just slightly more force uh, to press down, and that's because it has to get to like a threshold, which is like the actual click uh, mechanism, um, and after that it drops off again. So then that's what you see in the. Uh, I mean, I think my mouse works. Yeah, that's what you see here as well in the blue part. So this is the pressure point, so it builds up, and then it. This is the the, the click, and then it drops down, and then it it continues upwards again. But first, it, it you know. This is the reset point, let's say, um, and then it, it comes back, and uh, there's another click, which can okay, be. Okay, so the top line is the, the the push, and the bottom line is the. In this case, yes, actually for both. The I mean, push this, down and the push up as well. Uh, this is pushing down, so pressure point means when you when you're pressing it down yeah. to get a key to register, let's say, and then the the bottom one is the reset point, meaning when it when it's uh, pressed down, but it's coming back up again because it. It has to come back up again, of course, to reset. Um, uh, so the uh, the blue switch is just a bit um, heavier to press, which I found to be better for me personally, because uh, I had a lot of accidental key presses on mm -hmm. the Sonic Red, because I was used to being able to rest my fingers on the keys. And when you do that with an extremely light uh, keyboard like the Sonic Red, then you're going to have accidental but It's presses. It's what you say, used to, because I also when I yep. moved to yes. the uh, low yep. profile keyboard, in the beginning I touched all the keys. <laughs> um, it You need to get used to it. 
Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Uh, the pre-travel uh, for, I mean, I guess this is a little bit to compensate as well. You could see it. Uh, the, the, the blue one, uh, both the, the pre-travel and the total travel are a bit shorter compared to the reds. So that means that it's, it requires just slightly more force to press down. It's still quite light, as you'll see in, in the next slide. But, um, but to compensate for that in, in terms of the, the speed and how far you have to press down, it is slightly shorter than, uh, yeah, than the Sonic Red. So it's still very responsive and very fast. I have a question from, I believe, Mark. It's like a Cyrillic name. Yeah. Uh, when will the keyboard be on sales in Ukraine? Uh, I really want to buy this device. Please Ooh, tell me. Difficult question. I don't know. I yeah, mean, this, this you know, just came out a few weeks ago, but yeah. it, it, it differs per country. So yeah. it should be uh, available in, in most countries, like in the coming weeks. Yeah. Um, but that really depends per country. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't know in which via which retail channels in certain countries. All this from just a trying to read the Damn. chat as well. There's a whole discussion going down and down about how to use certain keyboards, which I really like. Uh, I like seeing that. All right. Um, so yeah, th these are the, the fundamental differences between the two switches. If you're considering buying a GK71, um, now here's a little bit of context when we look at the clicky switches that basically are around and that we use as well. Um, so. There are, I've included, well, there are a whole lot more clicky switches, let's say. I had an overview with like all the, you know, the different like Logitech, SteelSeries, Razer, all, everything in there, but I don't really want to compare to them. Uh, I want to stick to basically our lineup and, and what is kind of the benchmark. So that's cherry blue. That was like the original clicky switch, right? I think we can agree on that. Um, so if you compare the Sonic Blue on the left uh, to the Cherry, you can see that it requires quite a bit less operating force. So it's still, uh, even though it's 10 grams uh, higher or yeah, heavier, let's say, than the red switch, it's still quite light, as you can see, compared to the Cherry um, switch. And uh, also, especially the pre-travel and the total travel are, uh, especially the pre-travel actually, is quite a bit shorter. So that means it's very responsive and it's very fast to press down. You, you'll, you'll get a, a, a registered keystroke uh, sooner than with cherry blue, the, which is, again, pretty much a standard. The other um, full-size uh, clicky switch that we've used in the past is the Kale Box White switch. Uh, and that one is actually also in a keyboard here. That's the one that we so rigorously cleaned earlier. Uh, but I will, I will show you that later on as well. Actually, I can show you already uh, when I take it off. You can see it is actually white. Uh, here we go. Can we get it to? It's like too much light. Yeah, this this works best. Something like this. Anyway, so there's the, the reason why it's called box wide is because there's like a box around the stem. So inside there, there's a little, there's still the little cross. Uh, Difficult to see. Really, yeah, it's really not showing. Anyway, uh, but there's still the stem inside there, which is the the little cross shape, which basically you put the key on. Uh, but there's also the box around it, which helps to keep out dirt and uh, also uh, adds a little bit of additional stability uh, so the key wobbles less as it's called. Um, the main difference is there also the kill box wide switch uh, is also quite light so it, it has the same operating force uh, but the pre-travel and the total travel are slightly longer than the Sonic Blue. So in, in all regards the, the Sonic Blue is just slightly um, faster and more responsive if you want to call it that. So this is again to, to give you some uh, idea, some comparison between the, uh, the, the various uh, blue or clicky switches, uh, let's say. Uh, yeah, before we go to this, uh, what I will do is, because uh, I heard some people saying in the chat already, uh, hey, I want to see some examples, I want to hear some. Uh, Here, yes, absolutely. I want to hear some examples indeed. Uh, so uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Because therein also lies the uh, yeah, basically saying it's it's a relatively unique switch. Uh, it's not, I mean, obviously it's always based on something. You don't invent a switch out of thin air, but it's it's kind of like a mix of multiple uh, multiple things here. So what I've got here, I've got a, a couple of our products. Uh, this is the uh, GK71 Blue, right? I've actually also got. Uh oh. I've got multiple <laughs> ones here because I, I, I did my best. I stole keyboards from everybody. Yeah, this so Michiel the, now is not uh, uh, yeah, working. I stole, I stole He's Michiel's without keyboard. keyboard as well. Michiel's favorite keyboard, which is the one uh, with the uh, box wide switches. This is the GK71. Uh, maybe go to the. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
so this is the one with the red stretches. So these are non-clicky linear ones, right? But I've included them just for reference. Can you do this uh, close to your microphone? Well, I'll do that in a minute. Okay, I first okay. want to. I first want to basically lay out what I have here. I have the GK50 Elite with the uh, box white switches, right? Thanks, Michiel, for <coughs> donating donating that one. Uh, I'll give it back to you, honest. Uh -uh, uh -huh. I even have a uh, low profile clicky switch, which is the uh, chalk white, which is it's kind of like a miniature or flattened version of the box white for uh, switch of, for, from Kale as well, which is the, the switch that we use on our uh, GK50 low profile keyboards, both the TKL and the full sized one. So I have that one as well. I can throw that one in the mix. Uh, I just want to put the keycap back on. And I have one more. And this Heisenberg is, is saying all this from a switch, damn. Yeah, I know, I know. This is exactly what Eric hates. That's why I'm taking my sweet time. The noisy one. <laughs> this is, well, this is the, uh, the thing that's closest to basically the uh, cherry blue switch, the original cherry blue. It is a kale variant. So it's not cherry, but it's it's essentially the same thing. And I'm not sure why this is spazzing out in the camera because it's blue. Uh, it's not take really the other green. angle, yeah, like this. Yeah, but it's not really green. It's greenish, it's, it's probably. It's like the normal MX. Stamp. I can disable the white screen if you want. Yeah, you can uh, the, the green screen. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, the, uh, why not? Where to look for? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Too many options here. Here filters, filters, edit filters, yeah. uh, chroma key, gone yes. and gone. So, <laughs> didn't improve. No, yeah, well, it's not, the, not the focus, the autofocus doesn't really help, but... Yeah. Yeah. Try to do the other angle. I'm trying. Uh, anyway, no, it, no, no, no. See, it's blue. This corner so this down. Is like, this is like a typical uh, reference style, if you will, uh, like the original clicky switch. It has a different mechanism than the other ones. Uh, the difference is mostly in, well, it, it's like a physical difference, but um, I don't have the, the graphs to show you. So what I will do is I will just let you hear it because you can clearly hear the difference as well. Right. Uh, where's my microphone? Here we go. Should I shut up? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is, this is the, uh, let's say the cherry style um, blue switch. So if you, Pay close attention, you will notice that it only clicks when going when the key is pressed. But when I release it, it doesn't click, right? So there's one click, there's a one-way click. And the sound of it, um, it some people will say it's like more like a rattling sound as well. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll do a little bit of mock typing. And of course, there's a mix between the key bottoming out, so basically the keycap hitting the bottom of the key, the keyboard, uh, and the actual click. But still, uh, spacebar, Peter. You get the idea. Yeah, spacebar. Other keys. <laughs> keyboard to ASMR. Yeah, well, that's the idea, right? Okay. Now. Uh, we get the box white switch. Are you doing them in order from like... Well, I guess, in a way. But I want to build up to the... Because after this we're going to do the uh, Sonic Blue. So now comes the box white switch. Two clicks. Yes, indeed, very perceptive. So indeed, uh, this one uses what's known as a click bar, what people were asking in the chat before, meaning when you press down, there's one click, and when you release it, there's another. But also this, the click sound is a little bit sharper. Um, yeah, there's, there's a little bit less thunk to it, I guess. So it's, I, I would say it's a little crisper. So when you... When you're typing something, again, I'll do some mock typing. Okay, let me position the mic correctly. Maybe just take it off. <laughs> uh, wait, there's the... <laughs> Why is let, the me, let me get the cable away from the, from the space bar because it's really... Uh, 
messing with the sound a little bit as well. Uh, do you maybe need my mic? No, no, no. Can you switch to the other one? No, I'll switch to the other one again. Yeah. It's different, right? S-O-S, help both, me. Both sound uh, loud, yes, but that's probably because, you know, I'm holding the mic very close. Um, yeah, so th anyway, there's a little bit more difference there. And now uh, I want to see if you guys can guess for the blue switch, which I'm going to do now, the GK71 blue, which one this is closest to, right? So I'll see who can guess it. Two clicks. Okay, I'll do some typing. So two clicks is clickbar. I see some, some people already got it right. Uh, NRT Antiki, Antiki Thera. Damn, man, that name always tripped me up. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's basically, it uses the same thing as white box. It's not a white box switch because again, uh, I'll see if I can show you again. There's no box, there's just a blue stem. And this is, again, it's the GK71. Uh, but it does use a click bar. So that's why it sounds similar and there's two clicks indeed. So it's like a mix between the regular, like the shape of the regular uh, MX stem. Uh, MX comes from cherry, so we don't want to use it too much, but it, it's known as the MX stem, which is like the, the crossed shape. Peter, should we do a giveaway between all the clicks? Yeah, yeah, you can do that, that's sure, sure. Ah, we'll do it. Um, but yeah, um, so it sounds a bit like the uh, GK50 Elite box white switch. Uh, and it's using a click bar indeed, uh, so it's a quite a crisp sound, uh, but it's very, yeah, very light to press. It's, it's, it's noticeably lighter to press uh, than most of the other uh, keyboards there. And it's definitely faster to get to the actuation point. So, uh, first two winners today. Uh, I just, I just uh, <laughs> selected two. Uh, first one is Mandy76, underscore 76, and the second one is PPV. PPV? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it should be like that. Anyway, yeah. we always have fun with the nicknames. Congrats, uh, you will get a, a Steam Wallet code, Steam Wallet voucher in the coming days, can yeah. be next week. Peter, you're sending no, them out? No, this week. <laughs> I'm, usually, I'm usually quite quick. Okay, okay, yeah. good. Uh, if you want to join, uh, you can still go to amazon.com slash two slash insider or on, uh, what is it? YouTube, YouTube and, and Twitch. Twitch, click on yeah. the link from, the Gleam link from our bot. Yes. That, so uh, we continue with yeah. all the clicky stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, that's that's the uh, the different clicks. And then f just for, for kicks or clicks, I will also include the uh, the chalk white. So basically that's the low profile uh, clicky keyboard that we have, which I do believe also, if I remember correctly, also uses a click bar. But sounds a bit different though. But there's two clicks. But it's more compact, the whole switch, so because it's low profile, of course, so it will sound a little bit different. I'm used to this sound. This is the one you use. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, I like it. Well, there. I mean, this is the thing. It's it's very satisfying once you get used to it, and, and if this is your thing, if it turns out that this is like the clicky, and I'm not sure, Eric, what does it? Do you, can you describe what does it for you? Is it the the audible click or the uh, tactile click? No, like the no, it's that you gave that me a clicked. free sample. Sorry, it's that you gave me a free sample. 
No, you took one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, there's something about it that has to be that you know that for for some reason for you, you know, it makes it feel. Satisfying. For me, it's very difficult to describe. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not that sensitive. Uh, I just know I like this one, oh, uh, especially compared to the big keys you need to push hard on your keyboard. Right. Maybe uh, this way so I'm, I'm typing fast. So it's a profile nature that, yeah. that you like. And, and also I it mean, looks like a notebook, so you don't, yeah. uh, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm working on my notebook or on a keyboard, or, or I have a keyboard connected to my notebook via, do uh, via yeah, docking station. Dock, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's the, 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 yeah, the least different than taking a very strange keyboard which I have to butcher in order to get some sentence out on uh, email or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Th this okay. is light, light work, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's and just to be sure, guys, uh, uh, what Eric is using it for is just work, so he's not using it no, for no, gaming. No, not for gaming. Um, I mean, I've used uh, the low-profile uh, keyboard for gaming as well. I loved it, personally. Um, but, yeah, it's more for me, it's more satisfying for, for, for work, for if I really have to write emails, because, again, it feels like I... You know, my, my fingers can just fly, can just hover over mm -hmm, the keyboard and mm -hmm. don't have to press down that far. Yeah, so it yeah. feels like there's less effort involved. Yeah. I'm a lazy guy, so that's why I like it. Maybe. Less yeah, effort I involved, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, but these are like the noisy switches indeed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, other GK71, which has the red switches. And I mean, they, these are linear, so I can, sh I can let you hear the sound, but uh, there's no click. Or there shouldn't be. The, all the, the sound that you should hear is the key cap bottoming out. It's also a nice sound. It sounds solid though. There, there's still a solid like thunk, especially with the, the space bar. But this sounds less clicky than this. Right? And this is blue, right? This is blue, yes. Okay, can you maybe uh, move them a little bit to the left, Peter? Oh, sorry. Or to the right, sorry for you. Yes. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, people can see the color, blue and blue. red. Red. So red sounds noticeably more muted indeed, uh, which, you know, there's no audible or tactile click there. It's just, uh, you know, pressing the keys. And so this is really lightweight as well, so it, it takes very little effort to press down. If you rest your hands, that's the thing. I was used to just, you know, resting my hands on it. And then before I knew it, in a file or an email, I would be writing like, you know, SSSSSS, like there would be a whole line. Like, was I pressing it? Oh, I apparently. Um, but that's just what you're used to. So what's now the pro what now the problem is with these keyboards? It's like sometimes you hear somebody on the phone, a voice, and then you meet him in person, and then oh, he's totally different. I didn't expect this. Yeah. This can also be with these keyboards because yep. the sound does not resemble the feeling, how you know uh, how they the travel time and, and how you type yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah, they, those are different. So indeed, this is the thing. So the sound is one factor, but the, the way that they feel. Uh, and you will notice it, once you try some different keyboards and if you're uh, yeah again I think for a lot of people it's it's a thing about experience like once you experience different keyboards there's there are some that feel more satisfying to type on and you can't even if you can't really describe like Eric he couldn't really describe it he nope. doesn't really know but he does have a very clear preference yeah. now so he knows that, all right this is something I like I might not know exactly why but it just feels right um, and there's this element about you know if you're if you're looking for switches uh, and you're looking just above like the entry level segment, like the membrane keyboards, which are fine. But if you just want to uh, have a, a little bit of more premium experience, then you get into this territory of, of you know mechanical switches. And there is like a whole buffet of switches and different combinations for you to choose from. And I think it can be even worse, Peter, because I saw the, the diagrams with the travel time. Yeah. I think you can tune these keys. You can make like thousand different versions yeah. each. That's why, a little bit different. Yeah, that's why actually the, the blue keys that we have here, uh, they, these are actually uh, custom made. Because I, I asked uh, our, our engineers in headquarters, like, hey, what are these keys based on? Because again, they're based on something. They do have a basis. Well, they wouldn't tell me because that would then give me a, a, a 
already like a, a bias. Uh, so they, they just said, try it out and see what you think. Um, and I thought it was like a, a somewhere like a mix between like a yeah an, a typical blue switch like a you know cherry blue switch or something, and uh, the click bar, uh, but also very low travel time and still feels very light, uh, but not too light. So for me, the like the, the balance is just right. I'm not I'm not making accidental key presses anymore, uh, because the, the threshold for the click just prevents that from happening. Uh, but it it feels very satisfying to type on still, and it's very you know it's non-fatiguing for my fingers as well. So it's still light enough that I I like I still have that idea that I'm just merely you know gliding across the keyboard and barely having to press it really. Um, but and then you know somebody like Mike Michiel, uh, who's also on the stream a lot, he's more like a connoisseur when it comes to these things as well. Uh, That's why he, we didn't invite him today. Yeah, but uh, this is again this is like why I'm saying this is a very personal thing. Uh, he likes the, the heavier keys, meaning he likes having to press down more and that more resistance before you actually reach the actuation point. It's um, not nice when he's your colleague in the office sitting across <laughs> you and he's writing some mails yeah. or a blog or yeah. whatever. He's making hell of a noise. We, we used to call him the angry typist because yeah. it always sounds like he's writing an angry email. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so we're saying like, oh, who screwed up today? And he was like, well, I'm just... I'm just typing an email. I'm just replying to something. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 but what went wrong? Nothing. Why? Nothing, yeah. It's just just his ty his his you know his way of typing. But that's also why he's you know he'll be yeah very like yeah you know, it yeah, sounds yeah. like he's really hammering on the keyboard, and that's why it's like <laughs> yeah the per last email guy. <laughs> nice chronic. I like it. Yeah. If he was a woman, he'd be he might you might call him Karen. I'm not sure. Like, I would like to direct this email to the manager, something like that. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so it's again, it's a very personal thing. Uh, but I know, like some people, uh, especially in in our headquarters, they the, the Sonic Red was like their dream uh, keyboard, and if they could have made it lighter, um, they would have. Uh, so it's it again, it's a really personal thing, um, and it really depends on what you prefer in the end. All right. So um, what I can do also is I will, well, I will now then replace <laughs> my because uh, I had the low-profile uh, full-size keyboard here. I will replace that now with the uh, GK71 Sonic Blue so that I'm actually going to be using this one uh, during the gameplay later on as well. Uh, oh. I see uh, Papa Roach is asking, uh, are all the keyboards customizable? Uh, depends on what you mean by customizable. There is yeah. some customizability, yes. But it's if you mean like the switches themselves, then no, uh, the switches cannot be. Indeed, only in the keycaps. Yes. Well, the keycaps, I mean, yes, they are. I believe standard um, MX stem, so you you could replace them. Yes. Um, but yes, yeah, you always have to keep desk. in mind the A A N S I or your NC or or ISO uh, layouts because that, of course, can be different. Yeah. Um, Other than that, I think you could replace them. But yeah, the switches, most importantly, those cannot be replaced without some some really, you know, so, some work that uh, would definitely void your warranty. <laughs> Let's put it like that. <laughs> I think Ash on YouTube just joined. He's asking sound test. Well, oh. we just did like 20 minutes sound test, Ash. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, Eric doesn't want me to do no, more. No sound more. Test. Yes, he's done. Uh, okay. I just want to make sure everything is connected. All right. So. When it uh, when it boots up first, you can see it's a very nice uh, effect already. Uh, and what I mentioned, as per the hotkeys on the keyboard, you can without installing any software, you can just press that dragon key. There's actually, it's a double effect as well, by the way. You can see once I press something, there's like a ripple effect going out from there as well. So it's multi-layered effect. Uh, but I could just cycle through effects. I believe this is like a static color, um, and then I can make it brighter or Dim it. Maybe you can do the detail. That's more clear. Yeah, the problem with detail is the if you switch to green, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, keying this, everything away. This isn't green, but yeah, uh, I can see that. If this is more clear. Let's move my water out of the way so I don't spill it. Um, so Peter, this uh, works colors. without software, right? You can do really easily like this without that software. That was green. That, this is green. Yes. Uh, Peter, this works without software, right? This works totally without software, uh, indeed. 
Um, let's see. You can then, uh, if I have any effects. I mean, this is like a, just a color sh color shifting. Maybe in uh, the main cam. This is this is more like um, a rainbow uh, going in a certain direction, right? You you guys can see that. Uh, and then what I can do is I can either speed it up. Oh wait. Hello. Oh, just, oh wait. This I is the I warning that be... Nintendo always gives if you boot yeah. up a game. Yeah. So as you can see, this is now sped up, so it's faster, or I can slow it down. And now it goes really slowly. Yeah, this, this can doesn't really work. And I can also let it either. go the other side. And I think, was it this thing? No, it, wasn't, it was this one then. Yeah, this one makes it switch to going, now it goes up basically. I'm going, my mom, I'm going to try something. Uh oh. Ah. No breathing effect. Yeah, there's a breathing effect as well. I mean, there's like a whole list. I'm not even sure how many predefined effects there are, but I'm, I'm tempted to say like more than 10 at least. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't yeah. make it better. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things you can do here also. There's like a color changing waterfall effect or whatever and then you can say no i want it to go the other way maybe we need to switch off the lights well i think that's too much too much of a hassle eric i wouldn't bother because i'm yeah, well this is pretty much what i wanted to show um other than wait maybe i can also show with the rainbow effect uh which which ones are the oh yeah here we go i mean you've got the status leds uh, maybe in the close-up that's better because it's really tiny. The status LEDs here, and they actually, uh, in a lot of keyboards, they have like a static color, right? So even though this does the RGB rainbow puke everything, uh, but these will be, I don't know, blue, white, red, whatever, and they won't change color. Uh, but we, on our keyboards, and this has been since the last couple of keyboards already, uh, they will change color with the rest of the keyboard. So whatever effect or whatever thing you do, these lights will, will participate. Right, so that's nice. Also, the backlights of these media keys and the yeah. uh, scroll wheel. I like that. Yeah. So you do have, you do get the the full RGB experience, right? Um, yeah. What I want to show now, maybe also, uh, is um, do the capture. Yeah, maybe because then I can show. I mean, in MSI Center, uh, I've got it installed. This would be your uh, like splash screen. Uh, you go to features, gaming gear. Here you get some features, so if we click on the keyboard, uh, we can see it, it actually shows the keyboard itself and you can do, uh, you know, like custom uh, profiles, like I mentioned, you can have, there's three profiles here. Uh, you can set macros, you can record uh, macros and, and do that kind of stuff. Um, but if you want to do light, uh, stuff for lights, you have to go to the Mystic Light module. And here you can see at the top, there's all the, uh, the different products in this system that are uh, connected to the Mystic Light and Mystic Light, uh, um, so, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, yeah, compatible with Mystic Light. Um, and the keyboard, of course, is also there. And here you can basically program things on the keyboard. You can change the brightness. You can, uh, well, how many? These are all pretty much all the uh, standard uh, yeah, LED styles or, or uh, profiles. Uh, but you can, yeah, you can fully customize them, uh, saying, look, I want, just want to have a steady and then a different color. You can really, yeah, you, you can have several, several colors memorized. Uh, you could do a breathing effect. Uh, there you can even uh, say, I want to, you know, have it faster or, or slower. Um, overlapping, I do believe, means there's multiple uh, layers of uh, effect, what I showed you before. So it, it could do like the, you know, the rainbow, uh, swirly effect but then if you press something there's a ripple effect going over it so there's actually multiple layers um, stuff like that uh, just reactive um, anyway there's a lot of stuff to play with so it's really nice and of course you can link it with uh, game sync or ambient link with even more uh, I mean game sync is with specific games that support the mystic light um, API <coughs> And the ambient link is, of course, you can even link it with, I don't know, Philips Hue and stuff like that. If you want your whole room to participate with the, or even your whole house. 
Honestly, Eric, I, I maybe if, like this year Christmas or something. You know those. Uh, you know what I'm what I'm gonna say, right? I see your face. You know those houses that you always see the the, the, yeah. the videos that have like a total show going on for a couple of minutes. We need to do that, but with then, keyboards. Yeah, no, then you know the whole uh, setup, the whole house like ambient linked. Yeah, to, to the game you're Works. playing or something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then the neighbors going, "What the hell is going on there?" Merry Christmas. Exactly. All right. So then, um, I think that pretty much covers the keyboard. Any questions about the keyboard? Yeah, a few questions I want to. Yeah. Uh, GK uh, Headless uh, on Twitch is asking: uh, GK seven one seems to have different keycaps shapes on every row. Will there be extra keycaps variants provided by MSI? If not, will MSI no. provide the shapes? Or the, sorry, the, oh. the shapes, the dimensions. Uh, so no they can idea. make I mean, them. We, I could ask, but I'm not sure. Uh, as far as I know, we don't provide any e extra keycaps variants because um, again. From our current data, the, the amounts of uh, uh, keycap sets that will be sold separately doesn't really justify the, nah. the costs of, of you know, creating them in the first place, logistics. And again, the keycaps also comes with all the different layouts, the country layout. So it's, that's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, as for making them yourself... Uh, I think 3D printed, that's yeah, an interesting you could do suggestion. That, I guess. I'm not sure if they're all a different shape. I guess you mean the, uh, the, like the cascading effect, uh, if we go to the detailed cam. I guess you mean that they're all just slightly uh, off, yeah, off kilter, let's say. They don't completely, uh, it's like a, a little terrace, right? So indeed, they, they might be slightly different shape. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but that doesn't really or shouldn't really matter as long as you have uh, this is uh, and I for always forget what is ISO or ANSI but anyway whether you if you have your correct layout then it shouldn't really matter as long as it can fit on whatever stem you have and and doesn't it, it it's not like physically bigger than uh, this keycap so yeah. it doesn't ha need to have the exact shape but Headless, uh, maybe interesting question because you're, you're uh, like asking for the, the sizes. Are any other vendors publishing these or, or uh, providing 3D files so you can print them yourself? Because that would be quite interesting. Uh, you know, I'm not into 3D printing, uh, but uh, you know, if you have a 3D file, you yeah. probably can customize them yourself. Yeah, we'll order them, I guess. Yeah. Um, maybe one last thing I want to also mention because we do sometimes get some nice uh, comments about that is the uh, under the space bar you need to have what is called stabilizers and stabilizers are I mean this is the uh, well, maybe I need to put it like this so everybody can see okay, maybe the space uh, bar. disable the light speeder because the green is or maybe uh, make it one color uh, yeah that shouldn't be that's uh, yeah what is this oh, doesn't matter anyway um, this is the main switch, of course. Uh, but these are on the sides, on either side. These are the stabilizers, and basically these are like they they just dampen uh, the um, the switch a little bit once it goes down and prevents it from. If you didn't have these, the, especially the, the space bar, if you'd press it a little bit off the center, uh, it could even block. So basically, you you couldn't press it down because it's just you know it's too. Um, yeah, it's not pressing down straight uh, down in, into the, the main switch. So, uh, and these these work very, very well and feel uh, really nicely. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just going to put the space bar back on it. But don't want to lose that one. No, exactly. But it doesn't really matter where you press the space bar. Um, whether you press it on the actual corner, it, it will still press down as normal. Did you put it upside down? As normal. Yeah, I did, actually. <laughs> You can even do that, and actually, I know a lot of people that do that. I've started doing that as well because if you Hi. if you're like me and you hit your you, you have your thumbs basically like this uh, when you're typing, and and your thumb is like that, and you basically hit your space bar with your thumb. If you put the space bar normally uh, around normally, you will have like the the edge of this basically is is hitting your thumb at like an almost 90 degree angle. So this actually makes more sense because you're basically hitting the space bar. With on the flattest part, on the widest part. With so your, why with don't your we do this default? I don't know, because people are weird about it. I guess if you would do this, people would be like, "What the hell is this? This must be oh, a, makes sense. a mistake." And who knows? Maybe not everybody likes it, right? So <laughs> life hack, yeah, true. Yeah, this is actually I, I found out about this, and when I first read it, I was like, "Yeah, right. That's that's bullshit." You know, 
who does that? That's silly, right? And then I tried. It's like Eric when he, he used to make fun of me with clicky switches and especially the low profile. He's like, ah, you low profile. Ah. <laughs> and now he wants to keep using it, right? So yeah. I also thought like, okay, let's not judge before we try. Let's give it a try. And actually, I found it does make a lot of sense in my case, at least. So, yeah, you know. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, so the, the, the main point I was making was like now it, it really doesn't matter. Even if I want to press only on the, the utmost edge of the space bar, it will just still press as if I'm pressing in the in the middle. So it's not blocking. So, some keyboards, you, you I mean, give your own keyboard a try. If, if, it, if it doesn't have or has really bad uh, stabilizers, pressing on the on the very edge of the space bar basically will block you from actually pu uh, pushing it down. It will just it will freeze basically and will not press down. Anyway, also something that you know we found out is actually quite significant and uh, uh, is worth highlighting. Peter, yes. Can these keyboards swim? Can they swim? Um, not. I don't think they have an official IP rating. Otherwise, we would mention it. Uh, I guess especially the box switches. Again, like the switches have an, may have an IP rating, but the keyboards themselves are not uh, like waterproof. You shouldn't wash them in a tub or, or underneath the sink. No, um, it's not recommended. So in this case, no. Uh, I mean, they're not that open like honeycomb structure that anything gets in. Um, it, it's relatively closed, uh, but I guess... <laughs> not dishwasher safe. No, no. definitely not, no. Uh, because that would pretty much destroy the inside. There is like a little PCB in there if you don't know. Um, so we would I, recommend I it. I know from experience. No gaming in the shower. Well, not with this keyboard. No, definitely not. You could do other games in the shower. Do other keyboards. Yeah, and other games. Yeah. True. yeah. Hmm. Yes. Do another giveaway? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You then do the blah blah blah. Yeah. After that, well, okay. Yeah, you can still participate. Uh, either go to the URL you see above my shoulder there, uh, msidecom slash two slash insider, or you can click on the Gleam link being shared every five minutes by our bot in the chat on either YouTube or Twitch. Uh, we are broadcasting on multiple channels, so if you're not watching on either one of those channels, we would recommend you to go there if you don't want to miss out. Or on the you giveaway. can go to msidecom slash two slash insider. Well, yeah, you can always go there indeed. And next um, winner. It's Thunderlord. Thunderlord. Congrats. Congratulations. So yeah, we're going to send those uh, codes out to you guys in the coming days. I uh, hope you enjoy them. You know um, why I'm happy? Why are you happy? So far, nobody joined. Hey, are you not playing The Last of Us? Not yet, but I, I mean, I did say... No, but nobody joined. Normally, you have people, you know, yes. they, they see this, we're playing this game. Hey, you're yep. not playing a game. Ah, That's I'm, I'm gone. True. That's very true, yeah. So nobody complaining today. Not People yet, know we're talking yet. about right. so stuff. So I'm just going to get rid of uh, of all the other keyboards here now. <sighs> so that was it about keyboards. Yes. I hope that I kind of also got the message across in terms of the differences, both in sound, but also, I mean, in terms of feel, I can describe it. But it's really, if you're looking at the keyboards, I would really recommend for you to go to a, a store and uh, give a couple of different keyboards a try. Um, all right, then. The next product, Clutch GM51, lightweight, wireless. Uh, we also have the GM51 lightweight. Um, so as with our other uh, lightweight products, so this is, this is one we featured a couple of weeks ago, GM31 uh, lightweight, uh, this is the lightweight, this is the wireless. It's the same idea, but Slightly different mouse, of course, but it's the same series, let's say. So that's also why you get a, a wired, a regular version and a wireless version. I'm going to take the wireless version, uh, focus on that, because basically it's the same shape. Uh, but it has a whole lot more features, of course, with, you know, charging, a dock, uh, wireless connectivity and all that. So the rest pretty much all applies to this mouse as well, with two exceptions. One, uh, this one is uh, 10 grams lighter. Than this one, so keep that in mind. This one because of the cable, no, because of the battery. Okay, because uh, uh, this mouse, of course, needs to have a battery indeed and some wireless uh, uh, components that you know transmit and receive and stuff like that. Uh, so, this one is 85 grams, and this one is uh, 75 grams. And the wired mouse uh, has a uh, the opportunity at least to uh, utilize a higher polling rate uh, up to eight. 
8K or 8000 Hertz. Uh, the wireless one, for obvious reasons, uh, I would say, you know, conserving battery life doesn't offer that option. I believe it goes to 1000 Hertz or, you know, one millisecond, uh, which is pretty much the standard uh, indeed. So this one can actually, if you're, if you're looking for a higher polling rate, uh, 8 kilohertz, for example, the wired version of the GM51 Lightweight will do that. Uh, other than that, these, these mice are identical. So the only thing different is the polling rate and the weight. Uh, this one's a little bit lighter. Um, other than that, shape, size is identical. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, be sure to ask. Uh, let's see, right, so first I'm going to look at, these, uh, at this mouse by itself. Later on, I also have the other products, the other mice of the Lightweight series, uh, so the Clutch GM 41 Lightweight So, Michiel wireless. is also without a mouse. And 31 Lightweight Wireless, so, but this is more for size comparison, um, so I can physically have them side by side later on. So let's, uh, let's see what's inside. Uh, oh yeah, before I go on, by the way, also again, of course, always on the back of the box, there's the main features which uh, explain, uh, this one actually has a bit more RGB as well compared to the other lightweight products. Um, uh, of course, the charging and uh, charging dock, there's two ways of charging, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, of course, all the options you have, uh, there's actually three, uh, three options for uh, connecting this mouse, which I will go into and it's relatively lightweight. Now there's been some debate whether this mouse still qualifies as lightweight. There is no um, like rule or, or, or general consensus on this. Um, so I mean I would argue for a, a wireless mouse which will tend to be a little bit heavier because of the whole battery thing already. Uh, in the wireless segment I would argue this is still a relatively lightweight mouse. It's only just Lightweight though, I, I'll have to admit that, but it's, uh, it, it, I would still stand by the fact that we call it lightweight. Um, and it feels lightweight still. But I guess that also depends what you're used to. Very important, uh, the charging uh, dock and the dongle, that, those are included. And I'm saying that because I uh, know that not all uh, of these wireless mice come with a charging dock included. So then, light has no weight, meaning RGB has no weight. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Too bad the components you need, like the, the LEDs themselves, uh, actually weigh just a little bit, but it's not much. Right, so we have the uh, normal paperwork, of course. And then, ta-da, here they are. The mouse, the dock, and the cable. Uh, I will start with the cable. So this is what we call the uh, friction-free cable, meaning it's fairly light, uh, as in light, as in it, it, there's almost no resistance once you uh, put it in the mouse as well. Um, this cable can be used to plug directly into the mouse, so this mouse can actually be used uh, wired as well, should you want to do that. Um, but the, the uh, cable can also be uh, usually just used to plug into the dock and the charging dock is like this. There's also the uh, the dongle which you can connect directly to your PC or just put in the dock like this in the cradle. Uh, these two pins are uh, what are used, I think they're called pogo pins. Uh, they are used to uh, charge the mouse uh, and at the bottom you have, uh, there's a little bit of anti-slip. I mean there's it's still covered by some nice uh, <laughs> anti-dust uh, sticker here as well, so once you get this you should remove that, like so. Uh, but this is uh, like a, a ring of anti-slip rubber, so once you put it down it's actually quite sturdy on your table, it doesn't uh, shift around a lot. And then on the inside here is where you connect, it's USB-C as you can tell. Uh, so you connect the USB cable, which I'm going to do now. And then that should be... Is that uh, Type-C, Peter? Yes, yeah, I just, uh, I just said that. Indeed. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I, I was reading no the but chat. Yeah, so uh, basically like this, and then you could just put it anywhere. Um, then the mouse itself, I'll get rid of the box in the meantime. Is there an extra uh, set of the anti-slip in the box? No. Uh, how do you mean anti-slip? On, on the bottom of this? Yeah, no, 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 no on the mouse. The, oh, the five that's sides. not anti-slip. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you mean the uh, the feet? No. Yeah. Uh, but these are uh, PTFE, meaning uh, basically Teflon, but it's very hard. Uh, if you're using a cloth surface like this, this is basically a giant mouse pad that we have here, um, then th these should never wear off. But if you're using a hard surface, I remember you know, when we had the, uh, uh, the stream about the GM31, we, it was the same thing. People were saying, well, it would be nice to include it. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look into that in the future. Uh, because that basically really only applies if you, if you have like hard surface uh, mouse pads. And I know a lot of people still do. Uh, but yeah, then they will wear out a little bit sooner. Um, but yeah, that is what it is. So this mouse, as you can tell, it is uh, what we call ergonomic or right-handed. Uh, so it's not symmetrical. It's not, uh, yeah, it has a different shape if we compare that to the uh, GM41. GM41 is symmetrical. Uh, basically, so it's more like a, a more neutral shape. So the uh, GM51, this one is uh, more for right, well, basically only for right-handed people. Um, let's see, yeah, the, uh, the side grips are basically the diamond pattern we know, but there's a little bit something special going on there, which I'll show in a minute. Um, here's the space to plug in the cable should you want to use that uh, that actually also works as uh, for a charging but you can also just regularly use it uh, wired but this also allows you to store if you're uh, I don't know on the go or something and you just you only want to use the dongle and the mouse uh, wirelessly uh, but you don't want to use the lose the dongle but you do want to take it out of your device you can just plug it in here and it will stay so that's uh, quite secure in there it won't fall out. So basically you can just keep them together. Um, then at the bottom of the mouse, uh, you, you notice there is no DPI uh, switching button in uh, under the, the scroll wheel here. That one is, uh, as with our all our lightweight mice, is located at the bottom of the mouse. Uh, not very accessible, granted, but this saves a lot of weight as well. So that's this button, and it will si let you cycle through the DPI presets. And here's a little toggle, and here you can already see, this basically tells you the three modes of uh, using this mouse and connectivity. Uh, I'm hoping that the camera will stop focusing on me and start focusing on the product. Yeah. There we go. So BT, this one, uh, this mouse actually supports Bluetooth directly to your device. Off means basically just turning the mouse off, but uh, that's also the mode we recommend you use if you're going to use it with a cable connected. And uh, 2.4G, so that's your, your basic wireless connectivity with the dongle provided. And of course, these are the uh, two Pogo contact points. So if you uh, if you put the mouse let's see, in the dock, it's a little bit magnetic as well. So basically you just put it there and it's quite sturdy, sturdy attached there um, and it just stays in place quite nicely. So if we turn the mouse on, you can already see a nice little effect there on the side grips. So uh, it does, uh, at least for a little bit, it does some, uh, some RGB. But of course, because it's used wirelessly, uh, unless you specifically set it in, in Mystic Light, it will, uh, after a, a few seconds, turn those effects off to conserve battery life, which makes sense in my opinion. Uh, but when you start pressing buttons again, uh, in this case, we've set it to uh, showing uh, RGB effect as long as you are active, basically. So uh, as long as you are actively using the mouse, it will mm, nice. keep showing those effects. Uh, let me just quickly also connect the cable of the charger, uh, there's a nice protective film around the <laughs> around this connector as well. Which let me see if I can get that off. There we go. All right, let me just quickly uh, connect this to the PC. Uh, just needed to check if I disconnected the right cable yes okay so uh, yeah well maybe uh, get the close-up again uh, because if you uh, if you then put it into the charger it will display 
a color and now it displays green so that's why it's actually being keyed out uh, and that basically also it uh, indicates the battery level so green means it's still uh, pretty good, good pretty well charged there's a there's an overview for this i do believe it's up to like 70 percent it will be green um, and if it's static green that means it's above it's 90 percent or above charged uh, if it's uh, somewhere near 50 percent it will go orange and if it's nearly empty it will go red and it will start uh, it will start breathing but if it's below i believe 20 percent or something it will start or 10 percent something it will start flashing red uh, to indicate like hey you need to charge the mouse you're almost running out of battery um, and yeah you can just leave it in indeed if you're not using it uh, you can just leave it in in the in the base like this in the in the dock to charge overnight um, or whenever you want to use it uh, so then whenever you do take it out it's fully charged and uh, you have uh, yeah quite a long I mean I'll go into the details in a bit but it's uh, it, it has a, a pretty nice battery as well so you get uh, quite a lot of use out of it but that all depends on of course your settings for RGB um, so let's uh, yeah, and then when you take it out again of course it wakes up and you get the nice RGB effects coming through the sides um, maybe we can uh, we can show the slides Eric <coughs> yeah yep there we go Right, so a uh, clutch GM51 lightweight wireless. Uh, we call it our Apex wireless mouse because it's our top-end one. Um, so the main features, uh, well, you've seen the gorgeous MSI diamond light strips, which basically those are the diamond uh, side grips, uh, we mean. It uses a Pixar PAW3395 optical sensor, which is uh, state-of-the-art and uh, in yeah, provides incredible values, like up to 26,000 DPI, uh, which, yeah, it, it, that's insanely accurate. Um, not even sure if you want to put it all the way up there, but uh, it, it's really accurate. Uh, it also supports something called MSI Snap Charging, which I'll uh, explain later. Uh, dock Charging, which, uh, and it's included, but also it supports, of course, uh, which I already showed you. Uh, it has a, what we call a classic ergonomic form design, right-handed. Uh, it's f 85 grams, uh, so again, I've seen some arguments, some people say that's not lightweight. If you're talking uh, about you know, normal wired mice uh, or even some wireless mice are definitely lighter, but it's still on the lighter end of the scale uh, for wireless mice. Um, it has three modes of connecting, as I mentioned. So there is uh, what we call MSI Swift Speed, that's 2.4 gig, that's the uh, normal uh, uh, wireless <coughs> mode with the dongle. Uh, there is the Bluetooth uh, connectivity and there is cabled uh, connectivity. There, uh, it's, it has up to 150 hours of battery life and I will go into that later as well because again, that really depends on how you use it. If you have the RGB on at all times, of course it will not, use, it will not reach 150 hours of battery life uh, on a single charge. It will be a bit shorter but more about that in a minute. Uh, we also have the speed shift technology that's in MSI Center. It's basically some settings that are uh, custom tuned, let's say, for if you have like more like fast-paced gameplay, like, you know, really twitch movements, or if you are more like a relaxed, slow uh, gameplay. Uh, it supports NVIDIA Reflex, uh, meaning it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, and actually I think it's even uh, Reflex Analyzer certified, meaning you can even get all the stats on the screen if you're if you have like the oh what was it is that the uh, G-Sync Premium module in it? Yeah, and yeah. you can see the uh, Nvidia Reflex uh, yeah. microseconds. That's basically the, the you, you, everybody I think is familiar with latency, like connection latency, internet connection latency, but there's also system latency. So what Nvidia Reflex d does, and we've done a live stream about that before, is it shows you the actual latency inside your system and it, can, it even breaks it down per component like how much is the USB interface adding, how much is the, the graphics card, the CPU, your storage, all of that uh, adding to your total latency to you know from the moment you click to the moment something happens on the screen. Uh, pretty inter pretty inter interesting stuff. Uh, this mouse also has three onboard profiles which you can pre-configure and quickly uh, you know, enable so you don't have to redo all the settings if you have specific profiles that you want to use for specific games. And uh, an anti-smudge surface, meaning basically just meaning it's quite easy to keep clean and just you know, take a, a damp cloth over it and good as new. Um, 
This mouse, the MSRP for it is around $100 euros, uh, something like that. Uh, for the wired version of the GM51 lightweight, uh, it's uh, $69.99, I believe, so around $70 or euros, thereabouts. Um, so it's not, not a very cheap mouse, as you can tell, but it has a lot of features uh, to show for it. Uh, let's go into a couple of those features, um, and let's start also with a, uh, yeah, a size comparison. So I have them here as well, but as you can see here already, the, and I do believe if you've seen our stream about the Clutch GM31, that is the smallest, the smallest one in our lightweight series. Then there's the GM41, that was the first mouse we launched in the lightweight series. That is the longest one, if you will, uh, uh, but it's not, um, yeah, it, it has a little bit of a different shape, which means it fills the hand quite differently. And then there's the Clutch GM51, which is the mouse we're talking about today, uh, which is uh, not the longest mouse, uh, but it's a bit higher. Uh, I think this illustrates it quite well. We also showed this uh, overview during the live stream about the GM31. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, basically the uh, GM31 is quite small and also still uh, relatively, well, it's actually it's our lowest mouse as well with 37 millimeters uh, in height. Uh, the Clutch GM41 is actually, it's quite a bit longer, uh, 10 millimeters, so one centimeter longer, but uh, it's uh, pretty much, yeah, there's only one millimeter height difference between the GM31 and the 41. But the GM51 is quite a bit higher, which means that it really fills your, uh, your, the, the palm of your hand uh, much better, much nicer. So if that's the type of grip and the type of mouse you're looking for, then the GM51 is definitely, uh, th yeah, the better choice for you. Uh, in terms of length, it's a little bit shorter than uh, uh, the GM41. So, uh, yeah, that's also due to the shape. It's more like, you know, a little bit shorter, but a little bit higher. So it's almost like they took a GM41 uh, and, you know, pushed it together a little bit. So it, it bulged out at the top. Uh, but it has a lot of extra features for that as well. And of course, it's just a bit heavier. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the width, it all, uh, th there's not a whole lot of difference between that. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, 46 for, uh, uh, sorry, 64 for the GM31. Uh, 67 for the GM41 and 66 for the GM51. Yeah, it, it, it's all in the shape and, and where that width is located. So that's again something that's very personal. Uh, some people really prefer that uh, uh, symmetrical shape of the GM41. I see some people in the in the chat, uh, Skoldian saying, very happy with the GM41. I've been using GM41 as well since it released, and I, I in the past I also used to use these uh, mostly these uh, symmetrical shapes. Uh, just somehow that works for me. Uh, but also the the right-handed of the GM51 also it takes a little bit of getting used to for me personally, but I like it as well. And I know there's a lot of people that use that right-handed shape as well. Um, side buttons look too big. Need to try. Yep. Yeah, uh, well, I like your approach. Need to try because that's exactly it. Um, they, uh, the side buttons do stick out a little bit. If we, I can, let's go to the detailed cam. Uh, as you can see, it, they have like a, a little, more like a triangle shape. So they do stick out quite a bit. And that's, so you basically, what you do this, you don't really have to press down. It's more like you, you flick, right? So you, you just go like that. You go from, from, from the bottom to the top and that's how you click it. So it's more like a flick side button. Uh, and you can, see, you can still click them, of course, but then you're, you're pressing up against that edge, uh, basically. Uh, and that's a little bit different than the GM41, because as you can see there, that's really, it, that really offers a flat side. So you can still, you can still flick a little bit, but it, this one, uh, GM41, really, uh, it's really more about you know, putting your finger or your thumb on it and then pressing it. So it's, it's different in that respect. Um, right, so a more detailed comparison then uh, of these three mice. Uh, as you can see, they do have a lot of similarities. Uh, the shape is not one of them, uh, as in the GM51 is uh, right-handed or ergonomic as it says here. GM41 is symmetrically shaped. They do all have uh, the Omron uh, switches that are rated for over 60 million clicks. So that's quite uh, a number of clicks there. You won't uh, reach that very easily. Uh, the sensor, again, is like one level above. So this is really uh, one of the top level sensors that uh, uh, Pixar have at the moment uh, with the 3395. 
Uh, you, that's also reflected, by the way, in the values you see with the max DPI being higher than the GM41. Uh, the IPS, meaning the rated speed uh, that it can handle like really fast movements, uh, that it will keep tracking, which is ridiculous. You, you, you really won't reach that, but it has the, the rating for it. Uh, the weight is, well, it's the heaviest mouse in our lightweight assortment, uh, in the lightweight wireless assortment, uh, but that's uh, for good reason. That's also reflected in the uh, max battery life, because you can see that uh, the GM41 is already not bad with 80 hours of, uh, of playtime, but the GM51, uh, uh, yeah, almost doubles that with 150 hours. So that's quite a big difference there. Also, it offers one more uh, mode of connectivity with Bluetooth compared to the GM41. So also that means there's a, you know, a Bluetooth module uh, included, which the GM41 didn't have. So that also adds a little bit of weight uh, also, uh, snap charging, which I will explain in a minute, but uh, that's also support. So basically, that's just fast charging, uh, which the GM41 doesn't uh, uh, support. It, it still charges pretty quickly, but not as quickly as the GM51. Um, the dimensions, again, there, well, we, we already did a size comparison. Uh, the accessories included are pretty much uh, the same, uh, although snap charging is, is mentioned there. But uh, other than that, like physically included, uh, uh, accessories are pretty much the same, although one big difference between the GM41 and 51 is that the 41 uh, uses a micro USB uh, cable connection to the dock, while a GM51 uses USB Type C. So that is one notable, noticeable difference. But all, both of them uh, include a charging dock, uh, the friction-free cable, of course, and uh, the well, the charging cable. Yeah, um, and then the price difference there as well. So yeah. It's it's the uh, most expensive mouse in the in the lineup, as you can see. Uh, but that's for good reason. Um, I mentioned a couple of times uh, snap charging. So these are the charging uh, modes. And to to kind of illustrate the point, I've also included how long it takes to uh, charge the battery from fully empty to fully uh, full to fully charged. Which with snap charging, that's basically connecting uh, the cable directly to the mouse. And making sure that it's uh, that that cable is connected directly to the PC, not into a hub or any kind of other uh, power delivery device. It needs to be connected to your PC in a native USB 3.0 port. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't work correctly. Um, but the, in that way, you can have the battery fully charged in 60 minutes. Uh, but if you only charge it for uh, 15 minutes, then you get up to 27 hours of playtime, which is already should be plenty if you're in a crunch uh, and you just you know you. Uh, plug it in, go to the toilet or whatever, go, you know, take a drink. Uh, and when you're done, that's 27 seven hours of playtime, should be plenty. Uh, when using the dock, it's a bit slower, of course, because you're limited by uh, the, the transfer speed of the, uh, the, the contact points. So there it will take uh, 220 minutes to fully charge the battery. And if you would leave it in the uh, charging dock for a uh, quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, that adds uh, seven, about seven hours of play time to the battery charge. So also not bad, but that's basically just put it into perspective. So uh, when, when putting it that way, you can see that snap charging is a whole lot faster. Um, yeah, I already explained the, the uh, three modes of uh, connectivity on this mouse. So you have the wireless, uh, the 2.4G uh, for the, which is called MSI Speed, uh, Swift Speed, um, for the, uh, yeah, the, the, using the dongle, the, the wireless connectivity. Uh, you have the off switch, uh, which is recommended for the wired mode if you're going to use the mouse uh, with a wire connected, and the BT for Bluetooth, of course, which is uh, supported by uh, Microsoft Swift, Swift Pair technology. Ba basically means uh, the pairing is just easier and faster. Uh, and uh, I also wanted to highlight a little bit about the battery uh, because 150 hours sounds like a lot, and it is, but that uh, is rated when the battery, is, uh, sorry, when the RGB is completely turned off. And you can do that in uh, MSI Center. Uh, then it can uh, do up to 150 hours of continuous use. Uh, if you have all the RGB on, like out of the box, uh, that then it can last up to uh, 35 hours. So that's still quite a lot, but it's a lot less than 150 hours. So as you can see, RGB uses quite a bit of power there. Um, and uh, we wanted to mention separately using full white RGBs because to, to uh, reach a white color, 
RGB basically, I mean, there are uh, RGB works with you know three basic colors, right? There is uh, red, uh, green, and blue. RGB. Yeah. RG, that's what the RGB stands for, red, green, blue. And they are physically different uh, diodes or light emitting diodes there. Um, so to reach a white color, that means all three of them have to light up. That's why if you are using everything on, on a static white color, the highest brightness, for example, that will cut your battery life down even further. Uh, so that's quite useful to know. If you didn't know about that, now you know, and now you know why as well. That's basically because it uses all the energy. If, you, if you're just using blue, for example, just a blue color or a red color or a green, one of the primary colors, that's 10 hours of battery life you add. But crazy, right? Your mouse will get faster. Uh, with RGB on, yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Again, so yeah, that's the thing, uh, uh, and that's also why you know after uh, using it for a little bit, um, the uh, the RGB if if basically the mouse is not being used, it's just sitting there static. The RGB after a few seconds will just turn off, and again, this is to conserve battery life for you, so that it doesn't just automatically uh, use ba all the battery life and yeah. then is empty, uh, you know, within a day or two. You still have a lot to talk, otherwise we're going to give away. No, 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 I think uh, I wanted to cover this part. I think this covers most of the uh, uh, product related uh, okay, slides. Okay, good. Um, yes. Next prize winner. Let me go here. <laughs> next prize winner. Uh, Path of Sky. Congrats. Yeah, Path of Sky. Yes. Uh, congrats with your... Congratulations. Um, Steam wallet code. Yeah, with your Steam wallet code. I was thinking, what yeah. are we giving away today? Yeah. Uh, so you can still participate. Uh, go to amazon.com slash 2 slash insider or on YouTube and Twitch. You can click on the Gleam link and we will do another giveaway after this, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So now you're going to play some game? Uh, yeah, well, I first want to also show MSI Center uh, the options for, oh, yeah, for sure. this, uh, for uh, this, for let this me mouse. Take this one. Just quickly, uh, because also there, of course, you have in MSI Center, you have the, uh, well, you have the mouse showing up. Uh, oh. Ah, yeah, well, this is this actually happens. This is a nice example. This happens when there is a firmware update. It can happen every now and again. We got this sample quite a while ago. So uh, now it's after a release. Uh, we haven't uh, connected it yet, but it will basically just tell you, hey, there's an update of the firmware. You need to you need to connect it with the cable directly to the PC. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Uh, maybe I can actually do this right now. Yeah, just show I everybody. I can't show you the uh, the features. So now so it's I'll gone, and it. now it's I'll say back okay. again. Yeah, I think it needs to. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it would. It will. Uh, yeah. So first, of course, it couldn't detect it anymore because I disconnected the cable. So now I have connected it, and it should uh, hopefully start start doing the update. Oh wait, the USB dongle. Whoops, I wasn't paying attention. I thought it meant the cable directly, but no, it needs the dongle. All right, let's give it the dongle. Um, Reading is difficult. Hmm? All right, so. Uh, I think this is actually a, a, a dongle firmware update then, maybe. Could be. New firmware is available, yep, why not? All right. Uh-oh. YOLO. Uh-oh. <laughs> Could be that today. You, you guys you guys must think we are very brave here. We are. <laughs> you only have one sample? Uh, yeah. Okay. I have a wired one as well, right? Okay. If 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 all else fails, happened happens a lot of time when you have those engineering samples that are not compatible with the firmware or something. It sometimes happens, yeah. yeah. But they have special tools for that. Yeah, but we don't have them on no, hand. No, 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 indeed. Yeah, yeah, not during this live stream. No. Well, we can actually see the mouse itself is is was doing some animation just a minute ago. Um, yeah, not anymore now. But it was just flashing. Hey, hey, Peter, I'm just thinking out loud. But can we like make a uh, like a light scroller with text, like it says there, updating, and it Here. scrolls for yeah. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe like a, an exclamation mark or something. <laughs> or connected to YouTube that we can oh, watch oh, movies oh. there. Go back to the go back to the capture. It yeah. says a firmware update successful. And it's so still working. That's nice. Yeah, it's it is still working. Although I have it connected with the cable, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised. 
Um, all right, let's let's connect the cable back up to the dock. Um, which, well, I mean, I've got the um, I've got the uh, the dongle directly plugged directly into the PC, um, so it doesn't matter. Here it shows your actual percentage of charge, so 89% uh, at the moment. That's pretty nice. Uh, here you can basically um, yeah remap your your buttons on the mouse uh, so there's like yeah there are certain stuff uh, you can for example you can uh, say I want to uh, do a specific macro or a multimedia function or even change the DPI I don't want to lift the mouse and push it on the button uh, on the bottom sorry I want to have one of those side buttons uh, change the DPI that's possible right um, Sensor uh, stuff, so here you can change the uh, uh, DPI settings, uh, the levels basically, so that's uh, pretty fast. Wow, that's really fast. Uh, polling rate, lift off distance, hmm, how can I, oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, so I can basically just select, Ooh, that's really fast. I like the, like the medium setting, I do believe that's this mostly, actually, maybe one lower, yeah, this is it. Um, Lift off distance, uh, polar rate, well, as you can see, it goes up to 1,000 hertz. That's one millisecond, which is standard. Uh, lo lower, you can do, especially if you're not you know, gaming, if you don't need the, the exact accuracy. Uh, this will save battery life as well. Uh, lift off distance, uh, standard to low, which is recommended. Uh, angle snapping is off by default. Motion sync is on. Um, uh, I read about what this does, but I'm, I, yeah, this is too technical right now, so I won't go into it. Um, uh, let auto sleep mode, this is what, uh, what I mentioned, uh, like out of the box, if you stop touching the mouse, after a while the li lights will turn off to conserve battery life. If you want them to stay on, you can disable this uh, setting. That will mean that your battery runs out uh, quicker, but that's an option. Um, yeah, okay, when the mouse has been inactive for two minutes, actually, it, it enables LED sleep mode. So actually, you know, the app uh, informs you about what it does as well. Uh, and also, uh, low battery warning OSD. It's turned off by default, but you can turn it on if you want to have an additional warning pop up in your, uh, on your screen. If the battery is running low, you can enable the setting uh, and you can customize the, the warning uh, notification even. Uh, but that's quite handy because uh, some people really, you know, if you really want to know when it's going to uh, run out, uh, then you, you want to know that. Here's the speed shift I was talking about. So there's basically three gears or three modes. Uh, gear one is for general usage or normal games. Uh, this is for most competitive games. And basically this, this just optimizes some settings. Uh, so it's really, um, yeah, more responsive, let's say. And uh, this one, for example, uh, gear three is for gamers who have extreme micro movements. So I'm, I'm assuming this will change the uh, DPI setting to a low mode, uh, so that y you have to, uh, yeah, y you have more accuracy, let's say. Yeah, would you say micro movements? So that's a lot of movement or little movement? Yeah, I'm not sure actually. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess we can. Apply yeah, and I find think it will be little movement. Yeah, it can mean it can mean two things indeed. So now it's loading up the profile to the mice. Yes. Or it should be doing. I told you not to upgrade the firmware. No, no, no. Well, this is not updating the firmware. This is just no. But I mean, maybe this is the result. Take some time. Yeah. Not sure why this is taking so long, but. Okay, we can go have a toilet break, everybody. <laughs> Come back in five minutes, take some coffee. Yeah, well, not sure, but... Mm, uh, well, in the meantime, because I think this pretty much covers, again, I, I could show uh, uh, Mystic Light as well, but it's it's same as the keyboard, as in there, you know, you can change, you can select effects, uh, change effects, link it with other uh, MSI Mystic Light hardware. Um, so it's it's very similar to that. Uh, in the meantime, what I can maybe show you is, um, oh, here we go. Uh, there's also a bundle I want to highlight today, and that's actually linked to the game we're playing uh, now. We're going to play uh, The Last of Us Part 1, uh, because currently there's a, a bundle with AMD Radeon GPUs, uh, certain uh, GPUs, that's the RX 6000 series, that's basically the last generation, and the RX 7000 series. Um, if you buy any of these cards uh, in the uh, promotion period, 
then uh, you can claim uh, a free copy of The Last of Us Part 1, which is a really nice game. Uh, just released yesterday. Um, and yeah, uh, that's, uh, you can go to either AMD, but I believe also, uh, maybe I can show that uh, I had the, the page opened. Uh, if you go to msi.com and uh, go to what's new and promotions, and it should be there if that loads. Uh, yeah, get The Last of Us, here we go. So this is the, the landing page uh, on msi.com and here you can see which cards, uh, yeah. The uh, promotion dates, very important of course. So it started uh, March 7th and it runs until April 15th. Uh, and the redemption, redemption dates of course go on a little bit longer, about a month, so 13th of May, uh, the codes can be redeemed. Uh, all the terms and conditions are there, all the cards that uh, yeah, that are eligible. So everything down to the RX 6400, which is quite impressive, um, all the way up to the uh, 6900 XTX. Um, yeah, and here's all the cards as well. So yeah, really nice. If you're buying, going to buy one of these cards anyway, you might as well scoop up a, a free copy of the game, right? Well, and as I said, they're uh -oh. still going. Yep. Well, you know, it's a live stream, so this this stuff happens. Yeah. Luckily, the mouse is still working though, so uh, it's not really bothering me that much. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's boot up the game. So again, this can be because we're using an engineering sample. We always get the <coughs> very early engineering samples to test them, yep. to give feedback to HQ, and then at one moment you get like, do you want to have a firmware update? And that's always very tricky because you don't know what changed between the engineering sample we have and the final product and the firmware of course is written for the final product yes uh, i'm actually trying to get an overlay to work and i'm just realizing it's not working um <laughs> yeah today we will be using yeah. the id over uh, yeah i, I was oh. using the the radeon adrenaline overview and i'm actually seeing it on my screen i can I, wait i can quickly prove it as well um, this is the funny part we found out. Yeah. So we're capturing it via yes. a capture card. Uh, let me see. Yep, should should work now. Go to the phone cam. So this is what I'm seeing, All right? So you can see, and I, I selected a nice, you know, there's the FPS and the utilization, blah 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 blah. Um, and uh, even if I uh, switch out of, you know, this is the game menu, but it's still there, right? The overlay is still there. Um, and now, Eric, you, yeah, go to the capture. There you go. It's, wh where did it go? It should be here, right? So yeah, it's, we just it's found it's this weird. out about like 10 minutes before we started the stream. Yep. And uh, rebooting doesn't help uh, the, this AMD software? Uh, no, I, I rebooted the game. And uh, the only thing I didn't reboot is the actual PC, which... Nah, well, this is... But I don't want to uh, do it right Is there no but option like... Uh, uh, I, for me, it, it puzzles me because it's just it's no OSD software. No, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not not like a monitor OSD which you cannot capture. No. So uh, instead, uh, probably I will I will uh, use a good old Afterburner. Um, let's see, is this configured correctly? It should be. Uh, entire uh, monitor. We just captured the uh, uh, HDMI yes. it's from like the a, yeah. GPU. D duplicated, indeed, yep. uh, from um, from what I'm doing here. So yeah, you duplicated, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, Shall we continue the stream until this is fixed, the firmware update or the the setting? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe it will it'll be, be like an eight-hour live stream. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me. Uh, I, I wanted to see how high I could get the FPS, so that's why I put it on a really low resolution. Um, I also noticed that there's no like full uh, full window option in the in the game settings. It's only windowed or borderless window, which was a bit weird. Yeah, I think uh, Company of Heroes also had that. Yeah. So this is a 4K display, so I will put it on uh, 4K. I'm also using a. Uh, oh yeah, wait. I promised somebody I would show this. So, maybe go back to the main view, Eric. Let's see if I can... Uh, I'm not sure if this is advisable because it's it's actually live and running, but... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yes. Uh-oh. Very much uh-oh. Uh, so, maybe we need I'm, to reboot it. I may... Well, I'm going to 
pull some <laughs> some cables out. So this is the system Michiel built last week. Uh, yeah. And you upgraded it or downgraded Whoa. it or you did some changes. Side side graded it. <laughs> side graded. It. Uh, wait, let me see if I, how I can do this. Well, so oh, looks nice. Some stuff still connected. Okay. Oh, so this was the prospect case build. Yes. No, well, I didn't see that one yet. <sighs> right. So what I changed is I swapped out the CPU because, well, we had the, uh, uh, was it 7900 something X3D? Um, yeah. So, uh, but the, the FAE needed it for testing. Uh, so they did have the uh, uh, 7950X uh, processor. FAE, so that's good. That's he's, he's our technical play, department, he, yeah. Ruud Peter, indeed. Playing around with hardware. Uh, anyway, uh, so we put that in there. It's plenty fast. Uh, it's one of the fastest uh, GPU, uh, CPUs otherwise. So yeah, uh, that should be fine, but that's uh, different. I put in some different memory modules. It's still DDR5. I do believe it's in the bottom, right? Yeah, it's Kingston in this case. It's uh, 32 gigs uh, DDR5, and instead of 6,000 uh, megahertz, it's was it 50, 50 I'm just waiting until I see it on the screen. 5600, I believe, but it's, it's not a huge difference. Um, and the biggest difference is, of course, the graphics card. Because uh, last week, uh, Mike wanted to go all out. So, you know, we, we took the most uh, new and, and uh, high-end graphics card we could find in our uh, storage, and that was the 4090. Uh, but, of course, this uh, with this game, it's a bundle with AMD graphics card. So we took uh, one of the, well, basically the most high-end uh, AMD graphics card we could get our hands on. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have any RX uh, 7000 cards laying around, so we ended up uh, having to use the RX 6, uh, yeah, 6950 XT, yeah. uh, Gaming X-Trio 16G. So that's the uh, basically the, the top-end graphics card for uh, the Radeon line uh, for, for the last generation for the 6000 series. So there we go. Mike, don't cry. I didn't butcher it. It works. <laughs> <laughs> when is MSI making memory? I think we will never do that. I know in some countries like PRC, China, uh, we had some MSI branded memory, but I don't think we made that. It was more yeah. like for bundling. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's the same. It, memory is a risky business. Uh, right. it, it's yeah. I'm gonna put this. Prices can again. fluctuate really Before fast. I break it. Going up, going down, uh, a lot of go. this is uh, on daily basis. I still remember in the past we did, uh, um, um, what was it, uh, ODD, uh, optical, uh, like, like uh, drives. CD ROM, uh, DVD, uh, ODD, burners. that's optical disk drives. Yeah, and that was the same, you know, <laughs> we ship pallets, but yep. pricing was really sensitive. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah. That's the build I'm using. Uh, it's also down there at the bottom. <laughs> the specs are rotating. Uh, but yeah, the graphics card is the, the main uh, So change. Mike, how is the keyboard? Uh, Sorry? Mike was in the chat. He was complaining. You butchered his build. Oh, stop crying. Yep. Oh, I, yeah, wait. I, I disconnected uh, some cables that were actually connected that. from the front. So uh, capturing still working? Or maybe it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, let I think see so. Full capture. That, that should still work. That should still work. I didn't uh, touch that. Now we put afterburner on there. Oh, I tried, but I might have to restart the game to get it to work. That's also something that sometimes just a little bit janky. Um, <laughs> Peter is below the desk. I again. almost had an Eric moment there where I spilled some drink. Who would like to almost, love to see that? Almost. No, 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 you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna need to. Uh, now I remember why I didn't want to move the case. <laughs> I'm going to put it a little bit more under the table. Oh, you put it last week on the scale, not? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. Well, that was in the box. Okay, what was uh, it? In, inside the box, uh, with the build we had last week, it was th almost 32 kilograms. Impressive. Uh, but the box is actually a couple of kilograms as well. So I do believe that we, we estimated that the PC build we had last week uh, including the components, of course, was around 26-ish kilograms. Yeah, so that was uh, 26 kilograms. And how many kilograms per FPS is that? Pooh, I didn't do the calculation. Okay. Yeah, you need to ask Mike. It was his stream. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that would be a nice, uh, a nice metric. How many FPS per kilogram? Hmm. 
Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll just put it on an aesthetic color. Um, yeah. So let me see. What I've done here, uh, by the way, is I've put it on um, uh, 4K. 4K. And uh, V-Sync off, of course. Uh, there's a scaling mode, MSR, uh, sorry, uh, FSR2. Uh, I can also put it uh, on default, basically not using any scaling. It also, the game also supports DLSS, of course, not on this GPU. Um, uh, but yeah, FSR2, and then I can choose the, the modes. I'll choose quality, of course, because I want it to look good. Uh, and I still want to have it playable. Uh, uh, motion blur off, because off. Um, the render resolution, this is a nice thing. It changes, of course, uh, depending on the uh, quality setting. So here you can see uh, it actually gets lower if you go down from quality to performance or ultra performance. So here it will try to upscale to all the way to 4K from 720p. So. Uh, that will uh, give some obvious uh, glitches. Uh, here it just uh, it will try to update, uh, sorry, up uh, upscale to 4K from 4040p. So that's that's relatively uh, uh, sh should give some pretty good results. Uh, I'll apply it and then uh, the graphics options. I'll just quickly show you. I didn't really change much. I didn't really dive into this a lot. So I just put everything the way it, it was there. Um, Everything is on high. I'm not sure if it can. Okay, there is an ultra setting, but I mean, uh, th this is all an ultra dynamic objects, environment, visual effects. Yeah. Shadow quality, image based lighting. I mean, there's a lot of settings here. Again, I didn't really dive into this. Um, if there's any settings you think I should change, uh, shout out in the chat and I'll see if I can change them as I go, but for now. Um, it's just like a, you know, to give a, like a benchmark of uh, what you can uh, what you can expect and what the game looks like. Uh, I was still in the prologue, by, by the way. I uh, I only got the copy of the game this morning. Thank you, by the way, AMD, for providing that. Uh, but I didn't have that much time to uh, to really already dive into the story of the game. I want an MSI RAM cooler. Hmm. Hey, sir. How are you holding up, honey? So, how long does the polo take? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've I've seen a little bit uh, on from other. Uh, is the sound okay? Or creators. is it too loud? It, for me, it's okay. But let me know if it's, it's yeah, too Otherwise, loud I can guys. adjust it. So this used to be a big game, and I was discussing with Peter uh, that I'm not going to play it because I don't like stories. Yeah, I'm the guy who skips uh, all the dialogues in games because I want to kill, shoot, and play. Do I need to check if I can get the... Uh, oh, wait, MSI... Uh, Oh, it finished. Sender, uh, finished, yeah, indeed. Uh, do I need to check if I can get uh, Afterburner to, uh, to work? Wait, let me see. Uh, they like the, the OSD because it's. I'm so extreme in skipping stories <laughs> that in some TV series I'm watching hmm. some of the storylines I'm skipping. You know, you have the main storyline and there are always in some series some side storylines. Some I just skipped. Uh, and then later on they turn into something interesting and I'm like, <laughs> I didn't follow that. <laughs> All okay, to save time. Temperature usage. Um, I want to get to the FPS mostly. Come on. Uh, Ace Wing Mang, the same. Frame Skipping rate. dialogues. There we go. Play the game. Text so if this game is about the story, hmm. but it looks good. I'll, I'll put the frame time in there as well. Skippy, uh, yeah. <laughs> and now there is also a TV series for this game. So if I want to know the story, I can always watch the. Was it Netflix? Okay, let's see. Let's see how anyway, far we get. I can watch it. Oh, maybe Amazon Prime. I'm not sure. Uh, it's not showing up yet. Whoa. Oh, hey! Oh no! It's doing the double thing. <laughs> it's doing the double thing. Yeah, well, because there, like there's a there's a custom uh, layout of the OSD that uh, Hoot made, which is like. You know, but in you the don't know there. how to fix it. Uh, it's probably because you're running it in 4K. No, I think that's, wait, I'm sorry about this, guys, but it's probably because I need to disable all of this 
crap here because this is like the the, the, the normal you know the, the the text layout that you see on the top right but the, the nicer looking block um, that's the one that should yeah we work. still want to invite Ruth one time to 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 show hey, people how this works but it's complicated there we go. now it's now it's working there we go yeah yes all right some bitch made it out. So uh, this is 4K, and I mean, it's. It, I I think this is like the high setting, and not ultra. Uh, not everything is ultra, but it's mostly the high setting. But you can see I'm it's around uh, 80 Peter, FPS. I'm going to remove the specs because. Uh, it's right. Oh, it's I don't have audio, and otherwise <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about, right? <laughs> so subs for me. I actually uh, I included the names of the person that say it as well, just for you, Eric. Oh, thanks. Cool. But I still don't know who Tommy is. I guess the small boy. No, no, no. That's uh, Sarah. Oh, huh? it's, a, it's a girl actually. Oh, in the oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Sorry. Yeah, it's a girl. Someone else will come along. Uh, are you using the fixed Oodle DLL? I guess not, Sticky. Let me Google that. Yeah, I did hear that this game has, for some people at least, has a lot of bugs or Ooh, you know jankiness. DLL. So I'm not sure. It's decompression. Uh, I did let, to be fair, I did let the game compile the shaders all the way before oh, I started I hate the game. Because I, I read that drivers. some people ran into issues because they didn't they didn't let it compile and then they just started the game and. That caused issues, perhaps. I'm not sure if that's it. Oh, so uh, this this mod, uh, the, the fixed oodle DLL, <laughs> um, that's uh, for uh, memory leaks. How oh, is it? And might fix stuttering and performance in game. Hmm. All right. Well, fair enough. I mean, if you look at the frame time, which is uh, below the shield there, it's still it's quite you know flat. There's no big spikes yet. So that means, and it, I, it, it looks very smooth. There's no like noticeable big dips or something, something like that. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, do you have employees in Norway? We don't have an office in, in Norway. We have an office in uh, Nordics. Uh, this is located in Sweden, and I believe, but I'm not one hundred percent sure to be honest, uh, that we have local uh, sales uh, reps in the region. But I'm not sure if it's in Norway. Mm. You can always. Oh. Um, oh, okay, I need to press something. Like, oh, yes. Kick the window. There you go. Little mini game. Uh, what I want to say, you can always uh, check our vacancies. Maybe we're looking for somebody. <coughs> and you're the right person. Who knows? Ah, the game looks pretty good. I have to say, to be fair, I also, I, I'm not one of those persons that, that you know, watched the series yet or played the, the any of the previous versions of this game on the PlayStation or you know, because I know I do know it's a re 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 remake pretty much of uh, of a game that's been done on PlayStation multiple times. It was a long time PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but even on PlayStation, it was one of the games that you know people were always really excited about. It's yeah. just you know really good story. Just. Almost like a so visual novel, I guess. What would be faster, playing this game or watching the TV series? For you, watching the TV series. <laughs> so I'm I can skip sure, some dialogue. Because I know how you how you watch it. You yeah. just keep skipping. Okay. What's what's going on? Oh, that car though. Mayhem. Where do I go? I, I guess I'm going this way, aren't I? Yeah, it's probably pushing you to. But, this is, but uh, this is interesting level design, right? Like people come running this Keep way, me, like that way. No. So you automatically just go, all right, my herd instinct is kicking in. I need to go that way as well. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe that's stampede. not the right direction. I don't know. But that's, I guess that's part of the game design, right? Like it's yeah. trying to tell you like, hey, you need to go there. I'm sure if you go into the other direction, there will be yeah. some other uh, yeah, blockades some block, for you. Indeed, some, some roadblock or something. Ooh. Nice. We're gonna get out of well, not nice for them. I mean, nice events, yeah. which are triggered. Uh, still, I mean, it looks it, it, it you feels still pretty good. It's, it's, it's just Whoa. above 60 FPS, so it's not very high, but it feels pretty OK. Well, four okay. Oh, I can't go here. Hey, why you bite me? Am I Are game we over? infected? Is this game over? <laughs> could be. Uh, oh yeah. Alley. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's calling me over. All right. So you're not. Not yet. But I, have a, I have a bite mark. So. Oh yeah, I see that. On on my shoulder. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, dude. 
have to pay respects, guys. <laughs> oh, he's dead. Oh, what? Does he have like a super boot or something? Or he... We're almost there, baby. He killed him just by putting his boot on him. So I guess you will find out why they are affected and why they are not affected. Yeah, I read a little bit about that, but I also don't want to spoil too much of the story. Okay, fair enough. Then I have to play it, or I have to watch yeah, the TV. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the now. time order. Well, maybe it's not time, it's patience. <laughs> it's both. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Nice. It's just Those. when you know you're lying. Yeah, no, this guy won't run. Dad? And he's not responding anymore. It looks really nice. Oh, oh this guy's right behind me. Run! Oh, dudes. Was that your buddy? Oh, okay. It's okay, baby, we're safe. We're safe. Are hey. you sure? We need help. Military. Oh, it's my dog, I think her leg is broken. Stop right there! Not sick. Got a couple of civilians on the outer perimeter. Please advise. Eddie, what about Uncle Tommy? We need to get you to safety and go back for him, okay? Sir, there's a little girl. But. Okay. Ooh, somebody is spoiling. This is about to get dark. Yeah. Somebody, we've just been through hell. Okay, we just need. Well, you know the order he got. <laughs> what? <laughs> you could tell by the. Oh, dude, that's that's dark. Oh no! Damn! Sarah. Oh, in the stomach. Move your hands, baby. I know, baby. I know. God. Listen to me. I know this one. Well, that's a that's a good opening of a game. Chronic Mayhem knew all about it. He was trying to get us ready for it. Yeah. Come on, baby, please. For Paris. I know, baby. I know. And she's dead. Baby. So this is going to be like a revenge game, I guess. Yeah. No, not really. It's more like a very dark survival game. Damn. But I mean, I can see why people, you know, this it gets you, you in. This, get, this gets you really invested, yeah. right? This is. Like I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to kind of, you know, keep the tears back. That's probably because. Oh, main cam. I've zoom got, in. I've got two little girls as well zoom at in. home, so. Yeah. You can call them. They're probably still all right. No, they're, they're, I, no I'm, zombies I'm sure here. they're fine. But then it, it just kind of, you know, there's, oh. I guess that element of like you're trying to imagine what if that was me. But anyway, damn. Uh, Guy so, Tron is saying yesterday I, I did a test for this title on my uh, 4090 Supreme X uh, in 4K, ma everything max, no DLSS. I got around uh, 84 FPS. With the LSS on, I got 125 FPS average. That's a I, massive Are you now using there. anything, Peter, besides... The scene uh, served its purpose. He was supposed to get you. Exactly. Yeah, true. That's, that, the, well, it gets you invested. It gets you, like, emotionally invested in the story. It's just like, damn. Um, that's heavy. Uh, Peter, are you using uh, something like FSR? Yes, yeah, 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 uh, uh, FSR 2.0, but it's on the quality setting, so that is like the highest mm -hmm. uh, quality setting. Okay. It's, uh, again, I, I said this before, but it's upscaling from 4040p to 4K. We should have uh, made a spoiler tag. Yeah. Ooh, 20 years later, wow. I mean, this is the prologue, so you're not you're not spoiling too much, but I guess any anybody you're watching uh, on, on you know playing this game on I'm either coming. Twitch or YouTube or whatever, it's the same thing. Does anybody know if the TV series is like based on this or is it basically a reenactment? I have I have a spoiler for that as well because there's actually I, I was watching some guy playing it uh, was it yesterday or something and uh, he was like he, he entered the room he's like I know this from the series like uh, wait he said he said well no, wait it looks different because there's supposed to be some glass cabinets there they are <laughs> <laughs> he found it like holy crap it's actually the same so yeah. TV series is based on this. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it seems like it is pretty much based on each other, indeed. But I mean, you can't really replace Pedro Pascal, right? That's uh, that, that was a meme in and of itself. Apparently, he was uh, he was really like one of the best actors to, to do that as well. Uh, a lot of people were really big fan of, of him in in the role. He's doing a, a good good job there. Yeah, this game story is really heavy. But that's probably in order to achieve that emotional bond with the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, it wants you to get like invested in the story and in in the characters. Sticky UK69 saying it's based on, but there's a lot of new stuff and a yeah. lot of uh, stuff, stuff missing. missing. Yeah. 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 yeah, the movie is always different. Oh, Joel is voiced by Troy Baker, maybe the best game voice actor. Okay, interesting. He's gonna get us first. He does sound really good and convincing. He has a lot of um, how do you say that? Well, voice acting like you're actually you're, you're literally acting with your voice. You need to convey emotion, stress, you name it, um, um, with your voice. Yeah, and so the way you say things. Uh, this is a big, big issue, you know. When, when games uh, launch, a lot of people are waiting already a long time until they're on the market. You want to play it, but yep. most times it's. Uh, it's smart to just wait a couple of weeks or months until the first patches are out. I did that with uh, what was it, Cyberpunk. Oh yeah, but Cyberpunk was the most really yeah, but it well, paid off in the example. end. It was a nice game. Yes. Yeah, depending on the way you look at it, Cyberpunk was a good example for a game where indeed it was advisable in the end to wait for the yeah, you know, and that's patches. a problem in the end. You never know, but uh, you know, this game also I saw that it has some uh, bugs. Yeah, um, not as bad as Cyberpunk though, but yeah. But just, I mean, the way this looks, it's <laughs> really nice. Well, actually, I'm a huge Battlefield fan, and I played the first two seasons of 2042. First se two seasons, I believe, or maybe, I don't know. Anyway, wow. I stopped playing it. I still have it on my PC, but I switched to Call of Duty. I like the infantry gameplay a lot on Call of Duty. Attention. DMZ, really nice. Mm. And which is quite strange because I used to be a huge Battlefield fan, like with, I don't know, four or five thousand hours into the game. But uh, yeah, I, I saw that now the game uh, aged really well. Mm. Oh, I saw something here as well. This was, uh, I, I do believe they're going to shoot somebody here. Like, they're detaining them, I guess, or checking them at least. Basically. Quite funny. Uh, two guys in a biohazard suit, yeah. <laughs> and the other guys around her yeah. have nothing. So it's like 10 centimeters. Uh oh, they're measuring something. Got a live one. Uh oh. Ooh. Oh. What was that? What did he do? Oh, it's huh? a syringe, I guess. He's done. Oh. Oh. What did he? Oh, okay. So if you get. Oh. oh. Okay. I guess I shouldn't have done that. What? <laughs> I was gonna say like if you. I was gonna say oh, okay, that's fun. He actually reacts to you like if you get too close to him, he'll he'll push you away. But if you do it a second time, he just shoots you. <laughs> like. Okay. <laughs> On sight. But hey, I guess I in, no in, time for questions. In the process, I resurrected those two. So <laughs> you're like God. At least there's that. Yeah, Pepsi, indeed. Yeah, that escalated quickly. Yeah, they don't have much tolerance, do they? Hmm. Well, I wonder now what you would at least know you can die. This truck from moving. No. Steal it. What? Steal it. I don't it. think you can. I'm not paying attention to what she's telling me. He's, she's talking about driving something. Yeah, 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 yeah. A big truck, I guess. I guess I should. No, I was gonna say I guess I shouldn't get too close to these guys either. What's your business here? Got the day off. Uh, Gashbatron saying a tip for dear MSI stream crew is to transfer the OBS settings to the new AV1 encoder. Actually, we're looking into. Yeah. Uh, but we have to do some experimenting with that as well. But yes, that would be uh, that's something. We're First of all, things. we need to get a uh, RTX 40 card to yeah. put in our streaming PC. Uh, Pray everything works, oh, uh, right. and then indeed uh, 
Yeah, uh, test if, uh, if indeed this improves the quality. But I saw several platforms like Discord. We're also looking into like streaming to Discord if this is something for us. Um, but Discord is supporting AV1, uh, YouTube. I don't know about Twitch. Uh, but yeah, that's interesting. And then, of course, we're not going to lower the bitrate, but just hopefully have better quality. Yeah, Intel Arc. Yeah, That's yeah, also we, possible. We don't have an Intel Arc card here. But Not here. But I'm sure they're around somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey Tess, you see that shit? I was there. Hey, how's the East Tunnel looking? Yeah, it's clear. I just used it. No patrols. And where are you off to? Gonna pay Robert a visit. You too? Who else is looking for him? Uh, Marlene. She's been asking around, trying to find him. Marlene? What do the Fireflies need with Robert? Okay, YouTube stream service is optimized for 4040p streams. That's interesting because we, yeah, because we're streaming to a lot of different platforms, you know, uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Twitch, YouTube, uh, and uh, TikTok, TikTok even, yeah. Uh, Looking into Instagram streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've settled for a lot, for years already on uh, full HD, 1080p streaming, because yeah. that's pretty much the standard that everybody yeah. uh, supports. But yeah, if there's higher resolution streaming available, we'll have to see if we can do that. Um, you know, it's complicated, platform, Peter, because you that. you have the camera, you have the different cameras. Uh, we, yep. we have we have different uh, webcams. We have a uh, main camera. We have the game streams. What you capture, you have the capture cards. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, you can also look at HDR streaming uh, for some stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if that's supported. Oh, do I need to talk to him? Oh. So oh. everything needs to match really well. Uh, the Alright. Ooh, secret cave. <laughs> A secret man cave. Yeah. Well hidden. Alright. Take it easy out there. Oh, that's interesting. You let us know your experience with AV1. Let there be light. Yeah. Let there be light. Oh, God. These freaks. We need to watch what they throw away down here. Let's grab our gear. Whee! The f benefit yeah. is that uh, uh, most people can decode it. That's not the problem. Hey, there we go. There's a gun. I like it. Cold, by the looks of it. Yeah. Was it 1911? Mm, I don't know. I think yeah, that's could be. Could be. Name, it? could be, yeah. Not that I'm a big gun guy, but oh, it's a 9mm pistol. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if the Colt 1911 is a 9mm one. <laughs> that, that is Google that or ask Chat GPT. Yeah. Boost me up. What do you? How, how do you mean? Oh, okay. Boost her up here. I was gonna say, like, do I need to give her a heal or something? It's a 45. Yes, ma'am. Wee. Yeah. So that's that. Then it can't be a 1911. Nah, we're not hey, a good hey, expert, hey, Peter. Hey. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, she's going to pull up a guy like him. People in chat are asking, what game? Last of Us? No, the first of them. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Day four, asking for a PC. Come back tomorrow, please. <laughs> I'm sure we can increase your count. Oh, look so at that. Uh, Conic Mayhem is saying they have a 9mm version as well. So you were not wrong, Peter. Just outdated info. She's flirting with me. What's today's giveaway? We have Steam vouchers. Uh, we tried to get this game to give away, but we're too late. Uh, we got... When, when did they ask you to play this game, Peter? Uh, yesterday, yesterday, I believe? Yeah, 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 so short notice. Okay, so I'm looking for a ladder. What the hell? And this is always the problem, uh, you know, we, we try to talk about hardware and then uh, sometimes people from our headquarters ask, hey, can you include this game or can you include this okay. giveaway? It. You know, it needs to match and it needs to be, you know, now we can say we, we played this game with the keyboard and, and mice, uh, mouse we were talking about today. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it not always matches. Ladies first. Ladies. I think next week, we can I always talk about next week, that's too early. I, I'm just going to. Uh, so next week we are going to uh, do a live stream with our OLED monitor. Really nice monitor. Yes. I'm impressed. 
Um, and I don't get it. I mean, I'm not allowed to take it home. I, I don't get it. Does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> no, no. That means I'm not getting a free sample. Oh. And next week we're also going to play Crime Boss. Which is a really colorful game. So um, I think this will... And that's the problem with the OLED monitor. Uh, okay. You guys cannot experience it. So we, okay, we, because we're just okay, going to capture fine. it. Of course we have a second camera on the screen, but... Put away. Um, okay. You will not see the difference. Clean up your shit. I got a, I got an achievement for picking that up. The first okay. of us. So this, <laughs> this, yeah. this, uh, this takes a lot of time. Like it's really slow paced, isn't it? You have to be quite methodical, and maybe you can just charge through the uh, the now missions. I'm not sure about that. So it's also a horror game, or like more like survival it game? Be. <coughs> what do you think with a flashlight like this? Yeah, low uh, YOLED went bust. They did uh, uh, printed OLED. Mm. Very expensive. And yeah, but a Japanese company. I'm not sure what the J is. Maybe Japanese coming <laughs> OLED. Out of something. Okay, be. so I guess I'm guessing we're going to see some... Let me uh, Google. We're going to see some zombies soon. Because there's spores here. There's our culprit. Mm, it's not clear, but it could be Japanese OLED, yeah. Oh, look at that. That's nasty. Uh, we're still doing, uh, I think, one giveaway. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, look Ooh. at that. There's another one. It's like wow. infested, or what is yes. it? Yes. Oh, two. I'm, I'm what not sure is there's it? like this... Uh, like an angel? Uh, no, but there's like this, uh, what is it called? Um, Encapsulated? No, there's like this uh, a fungus oh. that controls, like for example, ants or yeah. other um, insects, I believe. And then if they get infected, they it will uh, steer their behavior. So in, in the case of ants, they will climb up higher to a place higher, then they will bite down like they're stuck there. They die and the, the fungus kind of grows out of their skull ah. and, uh, you know, creates a... Uh, you know, something that spreads, like a stalk grows out of out of their skull, and then it starts spreading and infects the rest of the herd, uh, the uh, the ant colony. Are you going to be helpful? I don't know. Oh, oh! What do you want to do? I don't know. What the do dust particles do? are nice. Just leave him. What? Maybe it's an achievement. Come back. Come back. <coughs> I mean, me like this. this is dark, right? So. Peter. What? I'm not going to be a squat mate. You're never <laughs> reviving me. Good. <laughs> well, you know, he was he was clearly going to get infected, so there's no. I mean, how do you this how, is, how can you tell? He t he said he was like my mask is broken, so it means he's been he's been okay. um, he's been Quick. breathing in the spores, meaning yes, he professor. gets infected. So you know, there's no. Oh, other so way. the dust particles are the spores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I think so. That's what I gather from it. That's why you know you see all these things yeah. growing here. <laughs> Probably gonna get a scare soon. I'm expecting. Oh, looks like an eyeball. Oh, there's there's something. I hear something there already. Oh, it's a lamp. Oh, look at that. Your, your flashlight isn't you helping. To listen. Oh, look at that. There's... Uh, take crouch, sneak up on enemies, press E to grab them. All right. That's... Um, and now what? I grab them and then... Okay, stealth. Stealth kill. Blah, 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 blah. Was that so? You can you can still strangle them. So they're zombies. Well, I'm not even sure if they're really zombies, but it's okay. That's uh, peculiar. So there was somebody there. Can I? Uh, no, nah, probably can't. Oh. Hi, hi, hello. <laughs> well. Back into the city. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, this is like if, in case of any doubt, shoot them, right? I guess that's uh, that's the message here. Maybe I'm too much into the looters or something, but I'm just looking here. Like, can I? Is there it's anything else? Yeah, the health stuff. Yeah, but you don't need that. No, it's full. So I oh. guess I still have all my health. It's because you know why? Because I shoot first, ask questions <laughs> later. <laughs> I guess that's why. I mean. Okay, so I, you don't have much bullets. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure how much. Okay, I have three in the gun now, and then three still loaded, I guess, or three that I can still load into it. I'm not sure. Uh, what are we doing now? What, what? 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 Where do we? Where do we go? Because you're following me, but um, what are you looking for? Is there something we need to do here? Mm, doesn't look so. Uh, okay. Okay. I smell the dust. Yeah, I know. It looks like oh, okay. There's like a stairs here. I guess we should go up. The shadow effects are also really nice. Yeah. Light shadow. Yeah, level design as well. Like there's a lot of uh, detail. Can I go? Oh, okay. So there's more doors here. I guess there's a lot to uh, to explore here. I'm still expecting somebody to be around the corner at some point, like you know, again, g giving giving you a jump scare or something. Okay, so that's barricaded. I guess we have to go here. Or is this actually where we came in? No. Is it? No, it's not, I don't think. I don't remember. No, 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 because then oh. there would be a ladder there. <coughs> I mean, it's really nice to see like this indeed, like, okay, what if we weren't here for a while and, you know, everything starts to grow, nobody's cutting the grass anymore. And Looks like my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, not really. Some of them air pressers. Hey, they weren't expired. That'd be a good idea. RTX on? Uh, I don't think it's an AMD card, so uh, I, there, there is like real-time reflections. It said somewhere in the menu, but it, it didn't say ray tracing anywhere. Oh, she's doing it. Okay, ladies first. Through here. Cover the entrance. I got it. I mean, imagine, because these guys don't wash, right? So imagine you wearing the same clothes every friggin' day. Hmm. <laughs> okay, what do we do? Do we get up here? No? Um, do we have to jump? Checking if this is a GPU only bundle or also CPU. But no, so no, far GPU, GPU only bundle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. Be a deer. Would you? Be a deer. What? I need to go get it? Oh, come on. Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. OK. Now what? I just throw it up, or? Here. Pass it to me. Pass it to me. How, how do I? How, how? 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 Oh, there you are. OK, I was going to say, where the hell are you even? OK. Here we go. Now how do I get back up? I think I can handle it. All right. Oh yeah. So now what? Do I get back up or? How do I get back up? This uh, this feels like a freaking trap. Not gonna lie. This this feels like I'm stuck here now. I. Yeah, that's all well and good. So you you're over now. But what about me? Get your ass up here. Get your ass up. How? How do I do that? I mean, I'd, I'd love to jump back up here, but I don't know. Should I should I just go in here? I was trying to do that earlier. Okay, now it lets me. Oi. Crouch. Ah, okay, there we go. That's more like it. I should be able to climb up here. Yes. Oh, you need to balance even. All right. That implies that if you don't do it correctly, you can fall off. Sure, there ain't any soldiers around. It's clear. Come on. 
So I guess you have to be a bit, you know, you can't just shoot everybody like I did just now, or at least that's ah, not recommended. Finally, you know. Well, I mean, as long as I have bullets, it should be fine, but you don't have that many. But I mean, if you just uh, one tap them to the head, that should be enough. Not even sure if that really is required. What was my flashlight button again? I don't remember. Was it F? Because the last time I pressed F, it tried to he tried to punch some something. Oh, here we go. T. What do we got here? Hey, more ammo. Nice. That means I get to do the shooty shoots. Wait, there was a stutter there. That was a definite stutter. The first one I noticed. What do you want to do? Wait. Hey. Well, that'll make it more interesting. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing else here. <coughs> oh, another stutter. Still not too bad. Oh, and another one. Hmm. Suddenly now it's getting uh, stuttery a little bit. Puffy, puffy. Uh, what do we do now? Where do we go? Where do we go? Oh, these guys look uh, really hard. What uh? What? Uh, I guess I need to go here. Maybe. Yes. No. Maybe. Who this? Uh -huh. uh, I hear somebody fighting. Who's there? An old headache. Don't ask. An old headache. Uh, where's that? Oh, where's the fight? Yeah, T. yeah, well, I was no, I was actually looking how to turn off my flashlight because it's T. Yeah, T. Yeah. I'm looking for Robert. He come through here? Half hour ago, he went back to the war. Now. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just bribe somebody. But the game looks amazing, yeah. I have to say. And it, it plays quite well, even though I'm at 4K, all the settings on high, and um, I'm running FSR 2.0, though. But um, yeah, it's still around 80 FPS, 70, 80. So that's definitely, if for a game like this, which isn't that fast paced, it's, it's still really nice. And it looks amazing. Well, I'm thinking about downloading. Uh, yeah, I would recommend it. Yeah, just giving it a try. <coughs> we have it on the Steam account now, right? Or what is yes. this? Yeah, this is on Steam. Yeah. That's the benefit of working mm -hmm. MSI. He's not. He's not. Uh, that's his game, oh, so oh. I just can download it from the Steam Damn. account. You ready? He just shot him. Okay. Don't approach them. Okay, use the environment to flank them. Okay, so... Oh. Hello. Headshot. Oh, that's a bit aggressive. Oh. Oh, hey. Stop moving! Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Texas. Right, so where, they have guns, but where's their ammo? Come on. Oh, damn, look at that. Square so I wonder, uh, would you alwa always have a headshot or...? Uh, what do you mean? Me, personally? No, I mean, oh. uh, you, you aim for that. To kill them. You hit him, but I, I, is that scripted or uh, no. could you also hit him in the no, arm or something? No, because I actually, I, I, hit, uh, I, I missed the other guy three times, so... But he's dead. Yeah, she shot him Yeah. in the end. Is she gonna open the door? Oh no, she's gonna pull me up again. All right, sure, why not? Um, Eric, let's do another giveaway, and then uh, yeah. I think it's uh, it's enough for the stream. By the way, playing it with uh, the GM51 lightweight wireless and uh, the GK71 Sonic Blue, it's really nice. Last winner for the day. Yes. Of a oh. Steam wallet code, so... Why uh, do we always have these names? What? What's the name? Danish. 
Danish. Danish. Danish. Danish. Danish. Danish. Thank you. Uh, you won. Um, four today with a loyalty bonus. Nice. Um, yeah, we were Peter and uh, Peter and me, we talked about increasing the loyalty bonus. Yes. Uh, but yeah, we need to look into that because a lot of these are already scheduled. Uh, yes. But Hello. Over here. We need to discuss and, and see how Hi. we can do that. Um, thanks for watching today. So, Peter, I will go to the to the next week. We already talked about it. So Peter yeah. is still playing his game. Like Call of Duty, we were not checking the chat. It was too too intense, too chaotic. Uh, so next week, uh, Ralph will be here. Uh, I think with Michiel. Uh, we are going to show you and talk about all the ins and outs of our QD OLED monitor. Um, oh, this one's got a key. <laughs> Peter just continues. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, and we are going to play, I think, Crime Boss. Yes. Indeed. The, the game is pretty damn good. Like, I'm, I'm really feeling like mm. I want to so, I want to keep playing. Uh, I can, Peter, we can yeah. go back here and, uh, I mean... We can stay here? Yeah, so I will <laughs> just remove myself and I, I go home and you continue to play. Nice. Yeah, maybe, but uh, I guess not. I mean, I got uh, I got some people uh, waiting for me at home. They, I guess they would appreciate food, it if food, I... Food, uh, food, food! Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Um, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you all for watching. For watching. Uh, hope Thank you, you all for uh, listening today yeah. to all the clicky sounds. Yeah. Hope you guys found it interesting. Uh, hope you, uh, yeah, you found out enough about uh, the keyboard, the GK71 Sonic Blue, and uh, the mouse GM51 Lightweight Wireless, and we also have the GM51 Lightweight, the wired version. So both uh, options available for you. Uh, next week, indeed, uh, Ralph is gonna be here talking about our first OLED QD OLED monitor, uh, yeah. and it's called the MEG 342 CQD OLED. So, yeah, not going to spoil too much, but uh, it's uh, it's a uh, 34 inch. From just judging from the name, right? Yeah. It has to be. It has to be. So nice um, features. Yeah, but it's a really nice monitor. We've seen it here, uh, and uh, yeah, you're going to see all about it uh, next week. We're just going to do a sneak do do? peek. Can we do sneak peek? Sneak peek? What? No, 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 no. Why not? You're gonna ruin it. Uh, just a few <laughs> seconds. That's not a sneak peek. That's a that's a smash and grab. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -hoo. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my finger! Oh, it's yeah, a yeah. it's a handprint. It's not even a fingerprint. Oh. So. This is the monitor we're gonna be, uh, Ralph is gonna be talking about. Yeah, next without week. the fingerprint next week. Yes, uh, otherwise we can get Eric back in. And, yeah. uh, but as you can see, it's damn nice and a pretty big monitor and it's ultra wide. And the quality is like, wow, Yeah. OLED. Yeah, we're gonna have to see how we can make sure that that properly displays to you guys because you know what the camera catches can be different from what you see in real life. So. We're gonna have to see how we can really show you guys the, the difference in quality. The beauty. Because indeed, this this panel and this screen right here, damn. And it's not um, only the panel, there are also some other really cool oh features. Yes. Yeah, More yeah. about that next week. Exactly. Bye Thank bye. See you next week. Bye bye. bye. Take care.